Lorries improved every day, 72, 70, 69. Nicholas, 69, 69, 72. I'm amazed now when you look at players, they've got drinks on every tee, they bananas and fruit, and dear old on Ivor goes Scotland, on and on. Paul Laurie. I mean, he doesn't drone on and on, he's just always there. He's always there, like old Father Thames. This little planes droning overhead, probably pulling along some sign saying, come to Auntie Bella's tonight for a, a happy hour. No. Wrong place. Wind across, right to left. Plenty of room to the right of the flag. On the tee from Sweden, Nicholas Fast. Well, at least it looks to be in the middle of the bunker. Funny sort of day this is going to be because you want to attack, but you can't attack. Today is going to be for good ball striking, and good composure, and some good luck. A bit of all those. Or I think perhaps... more so the good ball striker today, Peter. Luck is always part of it, obviously, but the good ball strikers, the course is set up really well and tight. Nicholas Fast on the first, 211 to the flag. Good opening shot there from Fast. Have you got a pick today, Peter, or are you...? Well, I thought um, there's been uh, a lot of uh, hopeful remarks made about Montgomery, but I think we shouldn't forget uh, Wales and Ireland, uh, Darren Clark, Boosnam, uh, Langer, I fancied at the beginning of the day. He's a very fine player. Davis in trouble here at the 13th, and you see he's in it. So this is the start of his run for home. Uh, he's won a lot of money, and he's been enormously successful. But at times, Davis Love has showed a touch of frailty, and we'll see it over these next half a dozen holes if it's if it's there. Sutherland here for birdie putt on three. One of only a few Americans up there on the top, near the top of the leaderboard. Very European look this week. Third shot for Love. Spin, back it goes. It looks odds on a five. And then he's faced with half a dozen holes that are very difficult. Tiger Woods on five, this long par three. Too late for Tiger to make a bit of a charge. Believe me, if he gets his name up around the leaders, they'll all be taking notice. But it's a very tall hill to climb. Bob Estes, one of the early starters, finishing up. This for a three. And beautifully done, and that's around the 66. Almost, uh, almost out with the bunker rakers this morning, 32-34, under very trying conditions, so it shows what can be done, and that will take him well up the leaderboard and certainly cover his expenses for the week. Well, a lot of the great men have arrived on the practice ground, and of course, so many of the crowd looking forward today to seeing Colin Montgomery doing well, and I must say he's looking incredibly relaxed. On the first couple of rounds, he disappeared into that tightliest van to have a, a bacon roll or a sausage and a sarni beforehand, and they said it kept him relaxed. He didn't do that yesterday, he had his worst round of the day. So they're hoping that he's going to disappear in there again at some point today and hopefully meet up with David O'Leary, the 
Leeds manager. Of course, Colin's a great Leeds fan. Now, if we just move a little bit further along the range, we'll see Retief Goosen here, who many people think has got the chance of adding this Open to his US Open title. He's talking to Joss Van Stippout, the sports psychologist or mental coach, as he calls himself, who's helped Retief really improve mentally in the last couple of years. And interestingly, he's standing next to his fellow countryman, Ernie Els, who also has just started working with Joss Van Stippout this week. So it'll be very interesting to see what Ernie can do today. Well, I'm down on the putting green, and Darren Clark's got one of his latest putting gadgets to improve his putting stroke, one of these metal bars. And you use it for alignment and making sure your stroke is absolutely in order. Talking to his manager, Andrew Chandler, and it's Caddy Billy Foster there. Got the cigar going. And just as we come to him, he stops doing it. But it's an interesting gadget, a little hole in the end of it where you place the ball, then you putt backwards and forwards and try and get the ball to roll down like a ruler and it helps with your alignment of the club face and your stroke. Darren, give us a nudge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's how you do it. it. It makes it look very easy, but it's not as easy as it looks. Anything slightly out and the ball leaves the, the ruler. Sorry? <laughs> now, now. Tiger Woods on the hole that gave him some aggravation. Uh, with off the tee particularly, he hasn't found the fairway too often. Two par fives in a row now, needs to birdie them both. Wind across from the right. And that's the best drive he's in here. Now it's still going to the edge, but it's going to be okay. It's a big improvement on yesterday, isn't it, Peter? It is, yes. Uh, he's got to do something dramatic. Davis Love for his par at the 13th. back down to the second tee this is fast after we saw that brilliant iron shot on the first hole he went on to make that for his birdie move to four under he had a good week last week in Loch Lomond until the Sunday not quite the best weekend for him but his form has been quite solid a lot of discussion going on here with this tee shot. Does it move the ball a little bit right to left and the breeze is coming off the right. Safely in the fairway for fast. Davis Love now at the 14th. He held that little putt for a, but dropped a stroke. Now the danger begins. They applaud. Well, that should be straight, and it is. Paul Laurie now, tee shot on second. That out to the right. Ooh, lucky boy, eh? Lucky boy there, Wayne. Very lucky. There's a bunker there, the other side of that hill that they've got to carry, and it looks like he's caught that right off the toe. And very fortunate to get away with that. He's got a long way left for his second shot. David Dixon. He was uh, again to the right in trouble. Third shot. Mm -hmm. 
So odds on a five. A couple of pushed tee shots have uh, been rather expensive. Well, it's par five, really uh, offering up a, a good birdie chance for both players here. Steve Stricker just 206 yards left to the pin very much downwind and of course the ground very firm now ball rolling some 20 30 yards at least on landing he's playing almost exactly downwind 206 185 to the front but if he's going to land it there there are bunkers right and left so it needs a very accurate shot really probably not much more than about a seven iron for steve stricker uh, yeah. Of course, the thing about Lynx course, uh, Americans not used to playing it, but they do seem to adapt pretty well. But like everybody, if you're going to land the ball short, you do need a little bit of luck here. Sometimes the ball gets thrown over to the right, and there is a very deep bunker. I think nearly revetted faces, and uh, they can prove quite a challenge to these players. But it must look a very inviting sight for Stricker right now. Must have birdie at least in mind. pin on this sixth hole is well back in the green today 21 on four off the right center of the green is the safe shot just started on the flag breeze off the right just let it feed back in the middle of the green the flag's flying just like that over there the wind's been pretty constant all morning but it is uh, getting a little fresher as the day progresses so i think with it from the right i'll be trying just to hold this off just a little bit caught one of those front bunkers on the left hand side he's trying to hold that up into the wind the wind's a little stronger than the players can probably feel down there on the fairway when it gets up above the ball gets up above the trees on the right Davis Love 14th hole second shot ride it ride it come on yeah beautiful shot I remember years ago, uh, I, uh, well, I'll tell you about that later. Yeah. Driver 332 yards from Tiger, leaving only 164 yards to the front. The problem he's got, though, the ball is just above his feet, and that usually makes you draw the ball. And on an upslope, that also makes you draw the ball, and the wind is from the right, so he's got to fight that tendency, and just again hold the club face open through impact. ball being on the upslope we've come out much higher this tiger was a full club short there for his second on this sixth hole although it is a par five outside opportunity for an eagle he's coming off two birdies on four and five well it price this is his third shot at the 11th Look at the flag there, not moving at all. This little corner sheltered by the trees, and that was a bit ham-fisted. Very ham-fisted. Off the green. We have news from the front, in fact, that that was his fifth shot. After that wonderful run of five birdies in a row, you haven't got to do much wrong here to get uh, into trouble, and... That's why I'm going to have a fascinating uh, look at Davis Love over these closing holes because he is in a very strong position should he birdie this 14th hole that he's on at the moment and maybe another birdie in the rest pars, he could set a target that might win the day which uh, is a fascinating prospect because Davis Love went off uh, at 5 minutes to 10 and has played extraordinary golf and here he is and I remember myself finishing here with a 66 
many moons ago, and I thought, well, if the wind gets up and we have a small earthquake, I could nick this, and guess who was the first one to come in and pit me? His father, who was Davis Love the second or eleven, depending on your point of view. But he was the first one to come in and nick past me, and I've really never forgiven him. <laughs> I ended up about fifth or sixth, I think. Won about 400 quid. But you don't hold a grudge, Peter, do you? Certainly not. Good. Go back to the first green. <laughs> I think Davis, though, that bogey he made on 13 was really put the handbrakes on his, his run, so he does need to make that birdie on 14. Lauren Roberts from America, three under. Uh, just watch this stroke. There's a really good opportunity to watch the stroke of one of the best putters in the world just everything stays still and just arms and shoulders big long slow stroke three rounds of 70 that's pretty good playing isn't it very consistent um, Alex Checker has had three rounds of 69 the only player uh, to be uh, under 70 each round Alex Checker who was in the penultimate group today playing with Ian Woosnam crowds there of Tiger Woods on the sixth. Enormous galleries this week. I don't know whether they'll set any records, but they'll certainly go close. Good opportunity for these people to go out and watch Tiger play a few holes and wait for the leaders who won't be hitting off for about another two hours. We're all hoping that they might see this guy light it up. Two putts for a birdie. Down that little hollow up and over the top. Just slowing up. But that's a good putt from such a long range. He's looking to hold everything, but you really can't force too many things at this game. Bright conditions, sun comes out, breezy. And Tiger has a small putt there for his third birdie in a row and another par five coming up. So he's uh, working to plan though for this thus far after dropping a shot at the first. Davis Love, birdie putt on 14. This is to get it back to five under. Well, he's got the toughest stretch of the golf course to come now after this hole, 15 and 17, two of the toughest par fours, 15th hole, averaging almost four and a half. Stricker played out of the bunker in the front of the green to here. This is for a birdie. He's parred every hole so far today. And a birdie, oh no. Just back into the wind. Might have just affected it a little bit. Bob Estes in with the 66, best round of the day. Poor old Sandy, Sandy like 81 today. 301. This Tiger Woods now to go to three under third successive birdie. in half. Well, he's only two under today. Bogey the first, that's right. So, three under. When it comes to sartorial eccentricity, there are a few people who can match Jesper Ponovic. Everyone's been complaining that it's all too black and white this year. Well, Jesper's black and white, but this is a bit unusual. Jesper, if we can disturb you for one moment. Sure. Now, these trousers are fantastic. Where do they come from? Hey, it's Jay Lindeberger from Sweden who made it for me, especially for uh, today, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the uh, fall collection that I'm uh, catwalking today, if you want to call it that. <laughs> Obviously important to you how you look, but today a very big day for you. You've come so close to this championship, and it means a lot to you, doesn't it? Oh, I mean, uh, if just everybody knew how much it means to me. I mean, two runner-ups and a 
very close call at uh, Birkdale as well. Uh, I mean, of course, I want to win this tournament. You made the mistake, which you admitted afterwards at Tambor, of not looking at leaderboards. Today you will be? Oh, definitely. With the, uh, you know, everybody being so bunched up, I mean, it's going to be a shootout. So I think everybody wants to know where they're at today. What do you think you've got to shoot? Uh, it's very hard to say. Uh, I mean, uh, nothing around par is going to do it. I know that. I, just, I would guess around four or five under. Wish you the best of luck. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Hold the cameras, folks, please. Tiger Woods on the par five seventh. Uh, this is the one that cost him a seven yesterday. He drove it in the rough. Was perhaps a little too ambitious with his second. Hit it up towards the next tee, the eighth tee. Unplayable. Had to go back. Ended up um, with a seven. And he's giving it the full treatment. Quite a narrow fairway. Oh. I think that might be a good one. Oh, that's a bomber. That is a bomber. A little more intent to that fantastic long iron on 15. Davis love this for three. As he hit it, there's not a time to be leaving them short. He's got a chance to get it in the clubhouse and post a score. See the frustration playing with Australian Robert Allenby. Allenby's three over. His championships hope this hopes this year are gone. But probably Australia's best player at the moment is Allenby. There's a great view of uh, all the problems here at this seventh hole. And that really was a poor shot from Tiger, trying to be a bit too ambitious, trying to draw it in, trying to be a bit too clever. Middle of the green, let the wind take it, the slope take it up towards the hole. Very popular. I think the golfing world is enormously impressed with Tiger Woods, not only his golf, but his, his general public demeanour. Davis Love for four on 15. This is to remain four under. Well, he's got the short 16th to come. With a pin on 16 today is much more accessible than it has been. He might even take the driver as an option off 16 today. There you see all the problems at the roundabout. The seventh green, top left, middle top left is that bunker. Then there's that knob where those spectators are sitting and then a couple of bunkers the other side. So there's problems, difficulties all around the screen, and both players are going to have the work cut out to get close to the hole. Stricker might, do you think he might come off the bank, Bev, or do you think he's going to flip it up high? Oh, he's got the putter out, the old... Someone's like, what's a Texas wedge? Why is it called a Texas wedge? You take a putter from off the green and give it a whack, sometimes 20, 30 yards away. Would you have picked the shot, Bev? Yes, I probably wouldn't have put oh, it there in the first place no. for two, though. <laughs> unfortunately um yes i think that's a very safe play and uh, a good lesson perhaps for everybody watching that uh, when it's very difficult get the putter out but it's not easy it's almost one of those the further left you go the further the ball's going to break to the right so windy in texas i think it originated there for you, you took it from 20 or 30 yards off the green so you didn't get the ball in the air and just trundled it along and hope for the best now this can be embarrassing if you putt into the bunker the hill round it comes and it's stuck now trying to be a bit too canny and suddenly you look a bit silly now he's still faced with a very difficult shot it's a big mistake there from Stricker but that's a lot to do with that pin position today players just trying to get too cute with their second shots you really have to if you're going to miss it anywhere you had to be long just play safely to the centre of the green and long what do you think, Tiger's going to drop it on the slope and hope the grass just pulls it up? What do you think, Wayne? Well, this guy has got a lot of different shots in his bag, and probably he and Phil Mickelson are two of the best with lobbing the ball, but just by that practice swing, it looks like he's going to bump it into the bank and just try and get it over top. It's got to get the right speed as it goes over the hill for the, for the grass to drag it or slow it down. 
touch and luck. But he got the line, but you see, just too hard. Didn't want to leave it short, didn't want to do a stricker. And now uh, odds on just a par five. Of uh, Well, he may well hold the putt, but if he doesn't, that's a, he'll know an opportunity missed. He only had a small iron to the green for his second on this par five. Fast now on three, it's to move to five under. Good putt, straight in the middle. Well, showing no nerves so far, Nicholas Fast. Tremendous start. First three holes out here, really need to play some solid golf before you get to the two par fives. As we go back to seven. Wonderful view of the green, surrounded by crowd some of them on the right there bottom right making their way up the eighth he's gonna putt again I find that very interesting if I was a if I was a betting man I would think he might not hit this hard enough and it could go left of the flag Unless he's so keen to get it going, he wraps it miles by on the other side. Not a bad effort, though. In fact, it's better than not a bad effort. It's very good effort. Should be okay for a par five. But rather like one son-in-law, you're always hoping for something a little better. <laughs> I looked at it like that, but very interesting. Now, I know, I'd just like to say hello, there's a group of Australians down in London who have finished their work this morning. Uh, congratulations, fellas. I know they'll all be sitting there watching the golf this afternoon. They got their job done very quickly. So, a lot of them are keen golfers. I know I'm not allowed to mention it because I copper hiding every time I bring it up. But how many centenary golf clubs would you reckon there are in Australia, Wayne? There must be a few that have tiptoed past 100 now, 100 years old. Royal Adelaide or somewhere? Really can't answer that, Peter. We've got... Oh, there must be some. There must have been some of those old original inhabitants. St. Dan's Old Links up the road here is just celebrating its uh, 100th. Nice club if you ever come around here. Just a mile or so, mile or less than that from here. Good course. Happy birthday. Tiger for a four. Now, there'll be a, some whooping if this goes in. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, oh let's have a look at Tiger. Oh, I think he said an old four-letter Anglo-Saxon word then. Oh, well, 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 well. That was in, wasn't it? Maybe the wind uh, hit it properly. That's right. Well, disappointed, but don't blame the putt, son. Don't mumble to yourself. It was your second shot that did it. Have a look at this again. It really looks in. It looks as if it's it's honing right into the middle. Just there. That look at that. Look at that. <laughs> mm. Davis Love on 16. Now, as I said, he may take the driver on this. Pins back left today. Oh, that's a beautiful drive. And it misses the bunker and scuttles through the back of the green. And I think he may be clear of the camera tower or the scoreboard there. And he's left with a tricky one. May do but no better than a four. Nicholas Fast on fourth tee. His tee slightly yeah. elevated. Well, he hasn't put a foot wrong yet fast. He's hit a lot of quality golf shots this morning. Two under through three holes.
peter ellis is taking a break now and i'm joined by alex hay afternoon alex yes good afternoon wayne nice to be back and uh what is looking like becoming a very exciting afternoon tiger woods has made his way back there to the eighth tee and another hole that goes right along parallel with the little railway line he's got an iron club in his hand on this occasion it's 419 yards this par four now this is not a long iron i can tell you this is only a four or a five this is at least two or three so he wants to keep himself well back from the green for the second shot if you do that of course you've got to hit the fairway Oh, I tell you, he may be standing a few inches below the ball and are very lucky to get away with that one. Nick, well done. Great to see one of the oldies in contention. <laughs> I know there's a few of us up there. <laughs> Woozy, Langer and myself uh, and Des Smith, you know, uh, certainly Woozy and Langer and I are all the same age. Uh, Desi's got a couple of years on us, but... Uh, I think it's you know shows that this golf course is not about just muscling the ball and 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 hitting it as far as you can it's about not only hitting it straight but controlling the distance that you hit it and i think that's what uh what i've done well this week um, particularly the last two days but i'm glad the wind's blowing today it's uh i think it's going to separate the ball strikers today i think have you been looking at videos of that putt for eagle on the 17th at Turnbury no. and picking up the jug <laughs> no i haven't but you know i know what's out there today um i think Anyone who's been in this situation before, you know, will know the mental peaks and troughs that you'll go through and, uh, you know, just trying to weather all the emotional, uh, all the emotions that go through you um, and, and just basically trying to focus on the game. That's the most important thing is not to get sidetracked and, and make sure that you don't make any foolish mistakes out there, be they mental or physical. Um, so I'm really excited about today. I'm looking forward to a lot, and I'm just glad the sunshine in as well. And playing with Darren Clark, so you're going to have plenty of popular following, I suspect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think there'll be too many people pulling for me in there, but, you know, that's great. Darren has played well, and, you know, he's one of the guys who's also, I suppose, got that label on him, one of the best young players not to win a major championship, and uh, he's, he's going to be trying very hard today, you know, and I think he's going to learn an awful lot, you know, win or lose. Uh, he's going to take a great experience away from today. But, you know, he was there in Troon, I guess, in 97, going into the last round. So um, we'll see how much experience he gained from there. May the best man win. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a few really good guys up there. <laughs> Thanks. Well, talking about good guys, he's also a very nice guy. Now, what about Davis Love? Through the back at 16. A bump and run that isn't going to run. And that's disappointing for such an adventurous uh, tee shot in this great round of golf he's putting together. US and Scottish Open champions. Retief Goosen, opening tee shot. Good shot. A little bit lucky. Just run off the back of the green. The more I watch that swing, Alex, the more I like it. Yes, it's certainly the, the one that you could model on. This one is a little bit of an individual action. There's no question about it, but he is one of the game's hottest prospects, I think, coming after, pretty close after Tiger Woods. A fierce competitor. Now, just let's see how many wiggles and waggles he takes with his fingers. He's cutting down on that. This is no more than a seven iron. that very hard this first hole just over 200 yards in length and he's put it straight in the bunker <coughs> disappointing start those bunkers up the left hand side have been like magnets all week but off he goes into a great adventure Bunkers on the left of the green and the pin quite well up. He's got a lot of room. Hopefully he didn't plug into the green. What about this one, Wade? Well, this is the eighth fairway, or just off the left of the fairway. Tiger Woods, second shot, a little bit blind. Totally blind. Oh, 
pretty good shot though. You can see from where that flag is on the left, Tiger really had no angle at the flag. And Mark James is here with us now. It was a poor par on seven for Tiger and then he's, uh, he doesn't need to make too many more mistakes. Stopped his momentum a bit, Wayne, as we moved to Davis Love. He's obviously flubbled his chip from off the back into that bank. That was his attempt for birdie. Nicholas Fast here at the second. In fact, it's the fourth, isn't it? Nicholas Fast, who's had a, a wonderful start. Two, four, three, two birdies. This young man, he, he does it seemingly every tournament. You suddenly see Nicholas Fast going several par under par. So we go to Marco Mira. Just in the right-hand side, Mark. Poor start yesterday when he was playing with his good friend Tiger Woods. But he came home well. And today, one under through six. Now, Davis Love, he's come out of this with a par. He had a crack at driving the 16th green, 359 yards. Succeeded in going through it, but he couldn't cash in with the awkward little chip he left himself. Front of the Dormy House. None other than Colin Montgomery in Burgundy. I didn't know whether he would come out in dark blue today. A lot of Scots in the gallery, but then, of course, lots of other nations as well. How smooth is the putting stroke? Alex, if you just have a look at that, if we can get to see a little bit of it, we might see it later on. Just the way he shuts it on the way back and opens it on the way through. Davis Love now at 17. Davis says uh, he probably knows that unless he birdies his last two, Mark, he's, he's out of it. He's lost his chance. There's too many players between him and... I think you're yeah, right, Wayne. He needs certainly, I think, to finish six under absolute minimum. We're going to have a look at this 17th hole because it's going to play a very crucial part in today's uh, championship final day. 467 yards, this par four. And you must never try to cut corners here. There's a, a mass of bunkers at the left-hand side. There they all. They suddenly appear into view. Seven or eight of them. You must keep it out to the right-hand side, but some new bunkering stops you going too safe to the right-hand side. Then you play over elevated ground, so you can never see the green. We can see it now. We'll show you exactly the slopes. And there's today's pin position, a real Sunday pin position, with everything sloping and running away from it to take your iron shot further from the hole and there's the view looking down on that self same hole and the lovely little pattern of bunkers on the left but it's to the first tee that we go big day for Monty this he's done well this week he's played very nicely the last few holes yesterday very easy to slip right back on a day like that when things aren't going for you. Miss a few putts. Third shot, Nicholas Fast on four. Ooh, he's handled that very well. Got some very tricky little lies and stances in these bunkers there, all tiny. Oh, Tiger Woods. Long putt here across the eighth green. I think it's got to go a wee bit to his left. Mm, just at the end, it started to die off the other way, but his tee shot really left him with no chance of being aggressive with the second. He played it with no more than a four or five iron, but pulled it badly. Garcia from the left trap at the first. Got half a chance from this trap. The one further up you don't want to be in. He's played that beautifully. He finished off last evening with the, with the chip in. He played a lovely little chip into the bank, made three. Fast now for power on four. Oh. 
Good putt. Good save, keeping his round going. Two under through four holes. Now Retief Goosen for his par at the first. United States Open champion, what a double that would be if he was to add this one this afternoon. As well as the Scottish Open. Oh, well, yes, I, I, I shouldn't say I nearly forgot that. Yeah. But, uh. <laughs> you can't say that. There it is. Now, well, Retief's uh, putter, the one he's used for the US Open and, and the Scottish, they've received 15,000 orders for them since uh, his two wins. And Jasper's uh, parading these pants. Now, if it, he was win today, you think they'd get 15,000 orders for them? I don't know which I'd rather not have, the trousers or the putter. <laughs> We've had emails about this putter asking if it's legal because uh, although it is, be it has been made legal, you can imagine that uh, in the rules it says it's supposed to look like a putter and some are saying that it doesn't look like a putter, a very small hitting area, two great flanges, but I can assure you it does conform. Looks a little bit like the wing keel from the Australia's boat in the America's Cup. That was Tiger Woods for par on eight. Davis Love, mid iron to the 17th. Pins on the left of this hole. 15 on. Just four from the left side. Got to draw this in with the wind to get it anywhere near the hole. It's not his natural on, shot to draw. Come on, turn it. He's calling the wind to do the work for him. It's just gone through it a bit. No, it's a safe enough play. A little chip from the back edge, but can't see him getting to six under. And no time for safety. He a bit disappointed. He only made four back on 16 after a good tee shot. And Vijay Singh. This is for Eagle on six. He already has two legs of the Grand Slam. Yes, great punt, Vijay. Well, two legs of the Grand Slam. Could he make it three today? Now into the silence of the first tee. Anything else will be announced. May well be, of course, that Ivor has already done that for us. Looks as if he has. Now Ernie, 71, 71, and yesterday for 67. The big easy. That looked like a very good swing. Is he looking a little bit to the left? Very difficult hole is to judge the distance. On the team from Scotland, Colin Montgomery. And the modest applause back at the tee, and that is because the spectators are not allowed down there. Alistair has decided to miss one last comment to give him confidence. Yeah. 65, 70, and 73 yesterday. And that is a kindly little break. He didn't get too many of those yesterday. Maybe today will be the day. I'm watching Colin Montgomery tee off with Dennis Pugh, his coach. Tell us a little bit about the preparations that Colin made over the last hour or so, the mood he's in. Good mood, very good mood today. He realized yesterday that he put himself uh, into a position where he really did have to play well and, and did over the last five holes. 
and came in really relaxed and took the burger break today. That was the missing link <laughs> yesterday. He, uh, <laughs> he did take the break. Halfway through the session, he's been taking a little break, and actually I can reveal it's not a burger, it's a bacon butty. Ah, oh, that, that makes all the difference. <laughs> um, didn't get off to the best of start yesterday. It is so important that um, he plays this first couple of holes well solid start yeah I think that's true I mean certainly uh, Alex said he got a kindly break there and he did get a kindly break it, it yesterday they seemed to go 50 50 calls went against him and today if he gets the run of the ball he's certainly hitting the ball superbly well he's got to make a few parts again the lines were the problem yesterday he hit them where he wanted to but it, yeah, w but they weren't the right lines good pairing for him today already chatting away with Ernie Els there yeah that's important because er Ernie's a, a player that's going to play the golf that he's used to playing against top quality world-class player he wanted to play with Ernie and he got what he wanted will Colin be aware of the decent start that Tiger Woods has made and what's been happening out on the course well we had a full update from Butch uh, he was sharing the uh, bacon butty break as well and uh, was saying how Tiger really yesterday was was struggling with his swing technique and, and hitting the ball right and just to Tiger really just try to keep hitting the good golf shots and didn't play conservatively which probably is costing this championship a decent start also for Nicholas Fast who's within one shot of the lead as we go back to the commentators well once again Nicholas Fast hits the green and uh, acknowledges that Nicholas Fast at uh, five under chip shot of Davis Love at the back of 17 Turn a bit, turn a bit. Good try. Davis, winner of the 1997 PGA Championship. You can see that uh, Colin's ball just perched on the top. It could just as easily have turned left and fallen deep into this uh, bunker. And uh, he gave that little smile uh, to Alistair McLean. He knew that he'd got lucky just for the once. Now Ernie else is just at the edge of the green. It was hard to believe that this man who was uh, seven years the finest player in Europe had, had, had gone 13 months until the Irish Open Championship without winning an event. So we go to the 17th. Davis Love Oh dear, and that's uh, probably the end of his hopes to win this championship. Yes, we'll have to remember how that ball turned away on that green. In the meantime, Colin. Oh, that went off a little fast. It's always a, a bit tricky when you come from a practice putting green which lies in the shelter of the dormy house. It might not be quite as quick running as the course. Well, that was Davis one for bogey. And that drops him back to three under. He really hasn't hit a bad shot for the last four holes and it's been a little bit unlucky. Woods for birdie at nine. I think you're right there, Alex. Uh, the putting green is quite lush and green. In, in the trees and out on the course things are just burning up slightly now greens are turning brown picking up speed tiger leaves it short you can't believe it now back to the first and i wonder what effect that uh, shot of montgomery will have with with only a similar type of shot coming down off a bank you never know how that green grass there will slow it And it did on this occasion. You cannot help but be influenced by your playing partner's result. He's going to finish this off for three. Nicholas Fast in the fifth. He used to play very, very slowly, this fellow. We called him Nicholas Not So Fast for a while. <laughs> but he's uh, quicking back up again. And he's doing very well in this championship. Just get Dennis Pugh, Colin's coach, to take a look at this putt and this putting stroke. How confident is Colin about his putting form at the moment? Well, it's going to be an important putt. Clearly, the first putt of the day is always important. But, you know, this... Uh 
If he gets this one in, it'll be a nice one to make on the first green. And fortunately he has. I may have sounded uh, a little calmer than I really am there. <laughs> that was a very important part. How worked out do you get during the course of the round? Uh, I actually get more, more excited watching than I do on the range. I try to keep very calm when I'm around the player, but uh, I think you know, once you're watching now, it's really difficult to watch without getting very excited, very nervous, and you're out of control. There's nothing I can do now. I'm just watching. Meantime, back to Tiger. Thanks, Dennis. Have a good day. Thanks, Dave. Yes, uh, Tiger Woods at the 10th. Another iron shot. Beautiful connection there with blade. Blade to the ball and then the turf in that order. And that's a mighty fine shot just coming up short of the path and sticking there. I thought it might have gone down into that grassy hollow. Mika Ilinen. Oh, well, this boy, watch him for a couple of holes in practice. Gives it a good knock, and that's a wonderful shot to the ten. Pin right at the back there. Monty here. I'm sorry, Ernie on the tee first. He's the only real problem he's got is a bunker at 277 down the left-hand side. <coughs> Wind's coming off the right. He's hit the fairway, right down the middle. Perfect position. Well, uh, Colin has seen that nice uh, tee shot by Ernie. It's a little roadway at the back. Used to be a double line railway there. Now a single line. And a nice little roadway where they can transport things and people up and down. Now, Colin, who would like to transport this down the fairway. You had a birdie on day one, and the marshal rushes out straight down the middle, he says. And that is beautifully played. Two excellent tee shots to the middle of this fairway. Ken Brown picked up something yesterday in Monty's setup, Alex, which I think might be a little relevant and might explain a few of his iron shots, uh, where his stance has been a little bit closed, which is a bit unusual for Monty. Now, Michael Campbell, 14. Campbell's four under for the day, three under for the championship. A little bit of work left to do here. Mick Ellenen trying to make this birdie on ten. Wonderful second out of the rough. Probably three. Three under for the day. Three under for the championship. We go to the first tee. Players view. It's Pierre Fulk on the tee. 69 or 67 or 72 yesterday. He was dropping back. Par here 71. Now just you watch this swing. He's one who aims open. That means his feet to the left. Swings up and then loops back in on the inside. If you get your timing, it's a lovely way to hit the ball around the links. You can make it run, but you can also make it hook with an iron. And that is nasty. On the table of Sweden, Jasper Barnovic. Barnovic now. I don't know how many of those trousers they'll sell in Yorkshire. <laughs> I suspect not that many pairs. They work for Jesper, though. Make him look taller, those trousers. I guess it's the stripes. Get a pair of them for Woozy. To mid iron, 211 this hole's playing at today. Pitch it front half and let it release up to the hole. Wind will bring it in from right to left. And that didn't hold at all. Up on the back apron. It's been an interesting week, the arrival here of the players. The course was green and lush, 
and as the six days have gone past since practice days, it's gradually dried itself up. From the middle of the tenth fairway, just 106 yards between Tiger and the pin. He overshoots this, there's a big dip at the back of the green. I think he'll play this fairly gently, don't want too much backspin because this green does sit very much uphill as he plays it. And there's a magnificent shot from, from Tiger Woods. He's going to pull out all the stops now. He has to pull out all the stops. Out in 33. And that included a sort of three putt hiccup on the first green. Michael Campbell on 14. This is for par. been playing well the last couple of years. Campbell had a good Open Championship at St Andrews a few years ago and then suffered an injury to his wrist. Went into the wilderness for a while, but he's back with a vengeance now. Davis Love on the 18th. Well, he's uh, stuttering home, Davis. Could be awkward if it's just dropped in there. Second shot for Els. You can see the, the flag fluttering just beyond the bunker. And I think that is as tight as he would want to take it. And they tried to urge it in a little bit with the practice swing, but too late. I think you can see the flag if you look at the two bunkers, just at the right hand end there of the far one. Monty here, he's got 168 yards to the pin, and this pin, as all of them have been cut all week, right near the edge of the green, he has to land this right of the pin. Well, he didn't. He, he's all right. He's within 12 feet of the cup. But it was a very bold shot. Laura Davis out there on the course telling us that safety would have been a bit to the right. Darren Clark, who I consider to be one of the best putters in the 8 to 10 foot range. He's another of Butch Harmon's uh, star pupils. We've just been watching Darren Clark finishing off here on the range with his coach, Book Butch Harmon. Butch, he was hitting the ball awfully well, wasn't he? Julian, and Darren's swinging the best I've ever seen him swing. He's uh, got great pace to his swing, uh, great control of what he's doing. Uh, it was funny, he said he wished the wind was blowing a little harder because he likes those low shots. You fancy his chances today? I think he has a great chance. But then again, there's a lot of guys that have a great chance. So I think that uh, Darren, the way he's swinging, especially if the wind gets up a little, he has a little bit of advantage there. But it's going to be such a fantastic finish. I can't wait to watch it. Who's your money on? Um, I actually liked uh, Clark, and I liked Langer, and I liked uh, Monty. <laughs> trying to get a few and see if I can get the right one. <laughs> Spreading your bets. Thanks, Phil. You got it. Yes, I would think he also likes Tiger, and uh, here's Davis Love, and the wind out of his sails, I feel. What is he going to do? Something really brilliant? I think with him there was just that total deflation when he missed the little putt at 17. Now Davis Love lining up this par putt here on 18. Yes, I think he's going to be one of very many players this afternoon that would have had a few thoughts about winning this championship today when he got it to five under. While we're waiting for him, Tiger Woods on 10. Beautifully bold approach. Can't afford to go over with your second shot, so that really was a gutsy play. But of course, he needs birdies, Tiger. <coughs> Everyone he misses now is a dagger blow because only eight holes after this one. Just the one par five left, the 11th. Davis Love now on 18. Well, good putt, it's 
disappointing way to finish. He said he had it to five under there through before he made bogey on 13, then bogey on 17. But look at that. Look at that front nine out in 30. Back in 37. We'll see a lot of that 37s, 38s this afternoon on this back nine. Part of it from the back of the first for his birdie. See that browning up that green. Good roll. And now Retief just pulled his tee shot into the rough. He's, he's okay. First cut of rough isn't too bad. He got a solid hit at it. He allowed for a bit of run and he's getting it. And that is a magnificent shot from Retief. Par par start for Retief. Still four under. He's tied for 15th at four under, but he's only two shots behind the lead. That's how congested this board is. Multi for birdie. On three. On two, excuse me. Getting excited and carried away. We're going to be in trouble later, aren't we? It's the trick with the Australians. Or getting carried away or getting excited? We have had an email from Australia. Uh, it's one whose friend says that the link and links is because the front eight linked with the back ten. I've never heard anything quite as daft as that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it obviously makes sense to someone. Keith Winness was his name. You might know him. Yeah, we all know everyone down there, Alex. It's, uh, <laughs> Sergio Garcia. to get on the clock if I was Sergio. I don't know whether he could pull the trigger in time. Shot. Get right. And that is horrible little rough right there in that hollow. You always feel though when the Spaniard gets into those situations they have a, an amazing imagination skill. Here's Pierre Folk. Well, he hit a, a very wild tee shot, so he's opened up with a bogey four. And Jesper has a, a pretty short putt there for his three. Only L's on the third tee. Had to withdraw last week from the Scottish Open as defending champion. And spent time in London just trying to recuperate from his physical problems. Came here a little underdone, but the rounds of 71, 71 and 67 find himself right in the hunt. You don't want to go too far down the right. We've seen many advent adventures over there. The marshals were thinking about doing a runner, but the ball is safely there on the right side of the fairway. Well, the first bounce on these fairways here always brings a little bit of uh, anticipation and excitement because you're not quite sure where they're going to go. Yes, especially today, Wayne. It's uh, just that little bit breezier. Fairway's getting harder by the day. Bringing the bunkers more and more into play. As Monty attempts to rip a long iron up the third. This way as well, isn't it? Oh, it's a good start for Monty. It's a few good shots, striking it solidly, judging by that. Has to get into the zone and just plays natural game. Normally, when you, you hit a tee shot like that down the fairway, you just bend down, pick your tee up. But as we said here, he's watched that right to the finish just to make sure it has finished on the short grass. Yeah, one of the problems of this hole is that the, the pin position is just five paces in from the right hand side so the further you play your tee shot down the right the more difficult becomes the second a uh, lovely view there over oh, these are the, uh, the commentary boxes down there in the foreground looking over to the clubhouse and the railway line wending its way to Blackpool 
Nicholas Fast on the sixth. Perfect drive. This long iron into the green. Pin way on the right. From the fairway, it almost looks as though they've missed the green with the pin. That's a solid long iron. Needs some two putts up the slope for his birdie. Michael Illinlin, Illinlin, say it again. This for a par. He's done very well, the British amateur champion a year ago at uh, that lovely course at Hoylake. Now a professional golfer and well in the hunt, this young fellow, three under. Three under, that's only three off the lead in this championship. There's so many players, still some to go yet, and they're all waiting to pounce. Big Price finished his green work. It's fantastic to see so many oldies, for want of a better word, right up at the top of the leaderboard in this championship. Everyone's looking forward to what's going to happen this afternoon. And I think so many people delighted to see Ian Woosnam up there. He got a terrific cheer, actually one of the biggest cheers of the day when he walked onto the practice ground today. Looks to be hitting the ball very nicely. Let's get the expert view of the man himself. Are you hitting it well, Ian? Uh, not too bad. Yeah, just trying to release the, hand, the right hand a little bit more. The, the boys in the box were eulogising about how well you've always hit your irons and how well you were doing it yesterday. Comfortable with that, but obviously we all know that the putter has been the problem in recent times. Have you got that going as well? Well, I think I ought to take a picture of uh, I was leading the stats, I think. Well, that <laughs> doesn't happen very often. Uh, but, you know, that is uh, a big improvement in my game is getting getting the, hole in the, ball, uh, the ball in the hole, I should say. <laughs> and... Uh, that's been a big difference this week. Pretty exciting to be in this position. I mean, the crowd response is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, uh, you know, as it got closer and closer to the lead, the, the crowds have been roaring and roaring and uh, trying to please them if I can. Pins tucked away a little bit today, a bit of wind blowing, demanding day. Yeah, I was just watching a few holes there before I came out and you know, it looks like they've got a few pins on some nice crowns and on some edges of some slopes. Uh, it's a day for being patient and knocking it in, into the middle of the green and, and just for putt goes in now and again and play steady really best of luck thanks thanks very much now we'll go out to the third and Ratik Goosen with a putt must go from his left to right this for a three it did it did yeah. <laughs> well you read it well good three for Ratik a nice start three four three and he's five under and only one away from the lead. Nicholas Fast left his first putt short of the hole and this is for a share of the lead. That's his third birdie of the day, he moved to six under. Second shot on 11, par five, Tiger. Saw so much action is now flickering into life again. A five way tie for the lead. Nicholas Fast joins Checker, Duval, Langer, and Woosnam. Colin Montgomery at uh, the third hole. His tee shot being on the right doesn't seem to have uh, anything impeding the journey. Although he's taken it a little bit safely, you can understand why. Just there on the right of the flag, a hollow. You wouldn't want to be down there. And that's a good sound second shot. Just Papanovic. Second shot for the second, as you can see. Thumping down. He does like a divot, Jasper. Made it pretty safe. His pins now tuck round the edges of the greens, and if you hit it to the middle of each green, you'll nearly always have an uphill putt. Well, surprise package here today. Nicholas Fast, three under through six. Second shot here on seven. Another par five. Right edge of the TV, too. 
Yeah, that's what I know. Should drift a little from yeah. right to left. Yeah, we'll get moved. Just needs to hit this down to the centre of the green. Flag is on the left. Stay right away from the flag. Just hit it to the middle of the green. He's bounced over Monty's path and into that front right-hand trap. Actually, mightn't be too bad a miss, really from that bunker. BJ Singh on the eighth green for his birdie. Already three under for the day. And that's a, another one. Now that makes him three under for the day. Moves to five for the championship. Didn't think it could get more congested at the top, but it's happening. And uh, David Dixon, just a word about him. He's playing with VJ Singh. He's uh, just one over for today's round and one under for the championship. He had a six, unfortunately, at the seventh, but he's had three birdies on his card. And out we go to Tiger at the 11th. Now, there's how it is all bunching up. It's beginning already, although some haven't started to look like we might have a, a massive playoff. In this championship, of course, we do it on the day. We don't wait till Monday. And it's over four holes, and then it continues on the 18. I think the RNA have got it right, Alex. I think 18-hole uh, playoffs on the next day. Uh, I don't agree with sudden death, especially for a major championship. They're too important, as we watched with Teeth Goosen. But I think the RNA have really got it right for the four-hole playoff. Yes, you were involved in one, I remember, at uh, Royal Troon. As we watch Retief. Oh, and he got a little greedy there at the fourth. He's not sure what's happened. He's, he must know from the gallery's response. Third green, Colin Montgomery. If you can get one of these early on, he'll be bubbling. Really put it up. Oh, well, no good giving it the teapot, Monty. Go and mark it and knock it in. Sergio. Sergio had a bogey at the last. The wind is off the left. And he knew. He knew he'd pulled it, tugged at it, but he's got away with it. So he's not hitting all the greens as he was hoping to do. If you remember the US Open, he's right, suffered from the hooks there as well on the Sunday. Well, well, that's a very good day. Over there at the States. This is the pairing of Darren Clark and Nick Price. This is game number 32. On the team from Northern Ireland, Darren Clark. Darren's had rounds of 70, 69, 69. We'll get much more consistent than that. He was my tip at the start of the week. And he's playing with my tip, Nicky Price. Swinging it very nicely, but he's taking that right at it. Kicks off. Very difficult to get the right blend of aggression and safety on a day like today. On the tee from Zimbabwe, Nick Price. I'm always fascinated when I hear people who tell you who the tip was when we get to the last group on the, the Sunday. Why didn't you tell us on the Thursday? When I we told you on the Tuesday. Oh, my tip is back you in Canada. You just want to put the two pound in, Alex, that's all. My man's back in Canada. We're, I tip, we're good in the wind. Now, Nick Price is good in any condition. And I wonder if he'll just send it a little more to the right. He's seen what's happened to the Irishman. There's never anything flowery about this golf swing. Pure and it's basic, 
solid as a rock. Wonderful shot. One of the best we've seen. And he's off running. He's not as old as he looks. It's amazing. Or he looks no, well, he looks younger than he is. <laughs> Maybe I should have said it that way. <laughs> Tiger on 11. Long putt for Eagle from off the front. And that was a weak effort. It looks quite green, this green. Another one that's surrounded by trees. Ah, oh, no. Nicholas Fast came bumping down here. At the par five. And that is a magnificent shot from Nicholas. A chance to go four under for this round and be outright leader in the championship. Hillen and one twelve for thirty. Very good tough part three twelve and to get the ball where he did there would be quite difficult actually. Flag today is tucked on the right now, Monty. This is for par. Really they're all important. We say that too many times, but this early in the round. Second shot, right where he had to. The greens are picking up a little pace. Take a second putt. Two pretty good shots up here. It's into the wind today. Playing long. Playing its full 542. Yeah. Well, he's missed a few this week. More lip than a busload of tour caddies. four. Well, if he doesn't get there today, it won't be for lack of support. The crowds here this week have come out in force to watch Monty to bring him home to try and get him that first elusive major title. Now then, Nicholas Fast. This spot at the seventh to make you leader in the Open Championship. Yes, and he knows it. He's looking at these leaderboards. He's a Swede and he's got a Scottish caddy with him between the two of them there. They know exactly the situation, how the land lies. What a combination. <laughs> Darren Clark on one. This green has proven very difficult to hit today. Jams it in. Peter Alice is with us now. Promises to be a very good afternoon, Wayne, does it not? Well, with so many players with an opportunity to win, I don't think I've seen this many around the lead before. There's going to be one person this afternoon that's really happy, and a lot of others going over and doing a post mortem of what may have been. Oh, the sun's come out, fresh breeze, and a very nice opening putt for Nick Price. Six under. One hole played, one under par. Tiger Woods on the 12th tee, probably fuming a little bit and not making birdie on the previous hole, but must focus again. Playing very difficult this hole. They're back in a sheltered little spot there. Wind from the left and against. Playing today 195 yards, but where they're standing, the pin hardly looks to be on the green. It's tucked behind a right-hand bunker, so our camera tower would be quite a good line to aim at. Just let the wind move the ball to the right. Region of an eight iron for Tiger. I think it's probably a little more than that. <laughs> I was going to say that's a long eight. Yeah. <laughs> Should have hit an eight, Beverly. You're dead right. 
Thank you, Mark. Yes, I'm, I'm not near enough to see where that's gone, but where it is is not very nice, I don't think. He's got to the stage where he has to force birdies out of the course, and uh, it's very difficult to do this in the nature of this type of golf. Par putt for Goosen on four. Oh. I'm used to seeing him make many putts in the last month. Oh, but that one little hiccup he had on 18, his putting's been outstanding. The one 18 at the US Open, Darren Clark. Just to save his par, this is a must go in. Get off to a good start. Well yeah. done. We hit a load of those on the practice putting green. It paid off. We move to Monty. Fourth pin tucked tight left, but that's a very good solid shot. Putting up the hill from the middle of the green. Well, he's, at least he's hit the ball in the middle of the club these first four holes. Yesterday didn't quite seem quite uh, that he did for the first few holes, but today has been better. This is Nicholas Fast, our tournament championship leader on eight. hasn't missed a shot yet today, has he, Mark? It's been perfect golf from fast. Dead right. Fast. Who qualified through the mini order of merit that finished last weekend at the Scottish Open of Loch Lomond, and now he has the lead in the Open Championship on his own, breaking out of the pack with four birdies in his front nine so far. Nick Price with a birdie at the first to join that group on six under par. Checker, Duval, Langer and Woosnam yet to go out. Vijay Singh, lightning fast start out in 32 with an eagle and two birdies. Parnovic and Joe Ogilvie at five under par. And then Darren Clark at five under par through the first hole. Nick Illinan has gone very well through the front nine, out in 33, and he's picked up two birdies since then at the 10th and the 12th. Goosen dropping back to four under par, and Colin Montgomery desperately trying to make things happen, but back to four under. L's in trouble. Well, he made good contact with that, but a little bold. I don't know where he thinks he might be. BJ, second shot to the 10th. Tricky line, the rough and the pin right at the back. It's a dangerous pin to go at. He's played it safely to the middle of the green. That's good play. to the first, Billy Mayfair and uh, Miguel Jimenez. 2.08, three round mm. totals. Identical scores, these Three players, 69, 72, 67. Tiger in trouble. Absolutely right, Peter, in real trouble here. Back right of the 12th hole. The ball is sitting way down in the bottom of this very thick rough. Lots of sort of wispy grass at about two foot high. It's uh, debatable whether he can get a good swing at it. If he mishits it, he could almost bury it into the... Uh, ground even deeper but uh, the dropping options are not uh, very appetizing either the thing is favor he's got quite a lot of green to work with there are bunkers on the other side but uh, you just give it a good thump you might knock it in the bank oh. well as they say in america touch all the bases that has gone back way down the fairway on the left-hand side, and he'll now be about 30 or 40 yards away from the flag. I bet to Stevie on the left, as it were, if he was playing from the tee. I 
bet you Stevie doesn't have a yardage from there, Bev. <laughs> he soon will have, though, Wayne. <laughs> Pacing out, out now like a good one. Yes, golfers all over country saying I've done that. Jimenez playing with Billy Mayfair. Good round yesterday for Kell, 67, and that needs to come up, but it does. There's two more games to go now. Nicholas Fast on the eighth. Tricky shot down into this elevated green. Let's see his drive well up. Be 9 9 or wedge from there. And that's a very good play. Detained it 15, 20 feet right of the pin. Darren Clark. He only just got it past those traps on that hole, leaving himself an awfully long second. He got his three at the first. Bit of a struggle. Colin Montgomery now. Good safe shot into this fourth green. Just to get that shot back that he dropped. Go on. Go on. Oh. Okay, Monty one over through four. A little frustrated. Plenty of golf to go though. Nick Price. Absolutely, normal. Alongside Darren Clark. Tough part three. The players hit their tee shots from a shoot way back there in the distance. And the wind today is blowing across them from left to right. This is the eighth green, Nicholas Fast, our championship leader. Tiger's fourth shot. Well, this is a little agitated about something, I don't know what. Probably the fact that they went in the road off the tee, but something's disturbing him. Just from the third. This is for his par. This is the putt Monty had. Monty missed it left, I believe. And Jesper's done the same. Must be a tricky slope to read just there. T shot of Montgomery on this par three. Playing straight down wind. is just not getting it done, is he? I thought when he went to the lead at the start of the week that that might be where he should be. Well, there was a little discussion going on there between Andy McPhee and Tiger, but really it wasn't about Tiger's ball, it was about Steve Stricker's. Because Steve Stricker actually knocked his tee shot what they thought was out of bounds, so he played a second ball, not announcing it as a provisional. But in point of fact, the marshals mistakenly said it was out of bounds. In fact, it wasn't. But having played his uh, three off the tee, he had to play that ball and subsequently actually made a birdie with the second ball, but so made a four. Tiger now for a five. Where would we be without those sort of marshals? Well... Well, there's a six there for Tiger. But uh, if you're given wrong information, Mark, you shouldn't, 
shouldn't be held to that, should you? It makes sense, Wayne, what you're saying, but uh, the way the rules stand, you have to announce it as a provisional on the tee, or it is regarded as your second ball and your third stroke. Cruel, hard but fair, as they say. Nicholas Fass at the, uh, at the eighth for a birdie. Good line, too. He's looked very comfortable. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, that sort of play, you expect them to just retreat at this stage or even earlier in the championship. These days, they don't. They try and hang around all week. New breed of player uh, can handle the pressure. That was Vijay Singh's attempt for birdie. Five under for the championship, three under for the day. The only man to hit 17 greens in regulation in any round this week. And that is some golf round a links course. Not out of it either, with his great power coming in. Jimenez at the first for a birdie. Absolutely perfectly. Mikael Inan. Beautiful touch. Boy. Brilliant performance. Five under today. Back to the first tee. And second last group, Alex Checker and Ian Woosnam. Just waiting for Iva there on the right to give the starter, to give the call. Nerves at the moment would be tingling these players sitting this around is game all day. 34 on the team of Germany, Alex Checker. I always had a problem sleeping, so when I had a two o'clock tea time, I didn't know what to do with myself all morning. How did, how did you handle that, Mark? I had a, a, a large Monty-esque breakfast, put my feet up and waited for the golf to come on, basically. Relax. But I know some players get a bit more jumpy than others. It's, it can be difficult. Um, those traps are going to be empty at the end of the day. On the key from Wales, Ian Wizzenham. Wizzy said he hasn't been driving it. He's been necking the driver a little bit, but his irons have, have been quality, which they always are. Wizzy does usually have a, a somewhat jaundiced view of his own game. Rarely admits to playing better than Paul. When in fact he's normally a flusher. And that's flushed. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Well, we've seen all these players. The first green's proven quite difficult to hit. And Nick Price and Ian Woosnam. Two best shots, was he almost a one? I've never seen him walk so fast. <laughs> his little legs are going like goodness. He'll set his trousers on fire if he gets that speed up for two or three holes. 450 paces for him that hole as well. Amazing. Ninth tee, Nicholas Fast, championship leader. Shot from fast. 
Lauren Roberts. A birdie at the seventh. In. Three previous rounds have all been 70. A rousing welcome for Wizzy at the first green. A delicious way to start. hunting ground for the Americans so a European win today would be very popular David Devel might feel a little lonely out there this afternoon good two Wayne as Monty putts for his par he splashed out of the trap on the right and that's the second bogey of the day for Monty checker in all sorts of problems here first hole tucked over he's played that very well indeed he's got himself settled hands and arms jabbed into the sand good result Nicholas fast at nine downhill for birdie as soon as he hit it more hope there than that it would go in he's nine, 19th in the Ryder Cup list Nicholas Fust could do a bit of damage this week when he if he makes it he certainly deserves to be there looks as cool as a cucumber under this sort of pressure this is for an outward nine of 31 Second shot at the 13th here for Tiger. Ball way below his feet, as you can see, and just keeping a balance on this sort of stance is difficult. Well, into the face, and it's out anyway, and that probably was the best he could do. Bart Langer making his way to the first team, the final pair, he and David Duval. Many years, Langer, one of the coolest of professional players. He would have made a very good gunfighter, wouldn't he, uh, Peter? Yeah, he would. Could stare you down. One of the toughest competitors. Tiger's third on the 13th. Beautifully played. Needs to escape with a power there after his wayward play on the hole before. David Duval on his way to the first tee. Bookie's favourite today. Started out this morning seven to two. Whether that's a uh, Good price or not, I don't know. Well, all the drama now of the first hole, we discovered that Woosnam has too many clubs in his bag, and so penalty shots after nearly starting with a one. God, I'll give you a job to do and you can't do it. Given him a job now, this means his penalty shots.
two two shot penalty so the two at the first becomes a four and i don't think was no minutes caddy will be on the very good terms for much of this round fourteen clubs you're allowed and there was fifteen in the bag thank goodness he hadn't gone another only been another two but that's very unsettling and he's mad cross these these things happen but I remember a player in Australia one year staying with his grandmother and he took his 15th club out of the bag and left it in the hallway. She went past, saw it there and didn't want him to leave it behind, so put it back in the bag for him. And he got a four-shot penalty because he didn't find out until after the second hole. But what a devastating blow for Woosnam. I wonder if that's ever happened before when a player's been leading a major championship. Well, he's got to put that behind him now and... Uh... Yeah, and just play quietly along, but that is a bit of a bit of blow, a bit of blow. Fancy starting off like that, and then finding you got a club too many in the bag. Well, what a initially dramatic and ultimately desperate start to this final round of the Open Championship for Ian Woosnam. But as the commentator said, he must put that behind him. He's now back officially to five under par, and Nicholas Fast remains alone at the head of the field. We're into the real climax of this championship now, and the rest of our coverage of this final round is now going to be on BBC One. Tune now to BBC One to follow it right through to its climax this evening, and also see the final pair underway. Our continued coverage of this final round of the Open Championship here at Royal Lytham and St Anne's, and as we reach the final pairing, about to head out on the course, Bernard Langer and David Duval, we've had some extraordinary incidents over the last couple of minutes. Ian Woosnam thought he had a share of the lead when he almost holed his opening tee shot, and he thought that had put him alongside Nicholas Fast at the head of the leaderboard at seven under par. Then it was discovered he had too many clubs in his bag, suffered a two-shot penalty, and poor old Woosie, where you can see the expression on his face, is now back, we understand, to five under par. But the congested leaderboard that we had at the start of the day is even more tightly packed as we get set for Bernard Langer and David Duval to start their final round, the final pairing on the course. Mark James, Wayne Grady and Peter Alice are the commentators. There's uh, Langer with the honour on this, the final round. Or perhaps there may be extra holes, there may be a playoff. If there is, 15th, 16th, 17th and 18th. And if we have a winner then, that'll be it. And if not, it'll be sudden death up and down the 18th. Oh, a bit of blow for Woosnam, having started so sensationally, but now Langer. He's improved every day, 71, 69, 67. Good iron shot. One thing for certain, I don't think this pair will be hard on the heels of Checker and Woosnam because uh, Langer is known for his slow, dare I say slow play, he's very meticulous. Duval, on the other hand, is fairly speedy. It'll be interesting to see how they shape up together. sort of take the wind out of the sails for a while that uh, episode there with Woosnam hasn't it uh, we've seen some exciting golf and a couple of good shots by Woosnam here he is on two said he's got to put that out of his mind easier said than done Asked at the 10th second shot championship leader oh. 
And he's almost two hours ahead of uh, Langer and Duval. Garcia for an early eagle. Seven. That was for four for a birdie. Oh, and four under. Two birdies in a row. Nineteen players within three shots of the lead, and Greg Owen is one of those. Sergio Garcia taking a huge leap up the leaderboard with his eagle at the sixth, and maybe in the next half hour or so we're going to see the fighting qualities of Ian Woosnam, who very briefly and very cruelly was up alongside Nicholas Fast at seven under par. His opening tee shot was within an inch of being a hole in one, then came that two-shot penalty for too many clubs in his bag, and Woosie is back to five under par. Alex Checker at six under through the first hole with a par. Duval and Langer just teed off. Illinen, Mika Illinen out in 33 and three birdies have followed for the former amateur champion. And there's Ian Woosnam back in that group at five under par. Meantime, much earlier today, we had a challenging round of 67 from Davis Love. For a while, he was within one shot of the lead and then faltered somewhat over the closing holes. And a faltering opening few holes for Colin Montgomery, who's dropped back to three under par. Tiger Woods at the 14th. Good shot, well, it's not going to be his championship. It would possibly expect too much all the time from Tiger. Out in 33, five at the 11th, which is a par five, but didn't birdie that. Three from the edge and six at the par three twelfth. Nicholas Fast for his fifth birdie of the day. Just turn a little bit. Good start. Langer at the first. certainly knows what's required today. Surprised he hasn't won this championship before. The two Masters titles to his credit. Yeah, he's been second twice, hasn't he? 81 and 84, I think. As we move to Alex Checker. Long attempt at the second, and that's beautifully judged. Far past start. More than adequate to calm the nerves, soothe the troubled soul. Wish he'd stop taking that hat off, though. His hair matches his vest. Fashionable, you know. Duval at the first. This for two. there a few years ago won many tournaments and they thought should have been number one now Illinen on 15 for birdie it's 15th hole the toughest on the golf course nothing more frustrating than leaving it right in the middle people at home can 
know that feeling well. Now to bow for par. Three for Duval. First par of the day. Was he has to regroup in a hurry. This for Birdie at the second. Got to somehow forget about what happened at the first or on the second tee. Oops. My caddy used to be called two shots, but <laughs> not for something like that. Not for that reason. No. <laughs> we had one called two bags, didn't we? We used to caddy for Savvy. As fast. On the 11th. He's been lucky. Gone right through onto the pathway. Third tee shot for Alex Checker. Long iron. Wind from the right. Oh, and that's a wicked bounce. You can see that brown fairway for Marshall <laughs> signalling as though it's OK, but I don't think he'll be all that chuffed with it. And that's the culprit, man responsible for the extra club in the bag. Well, I think Ian must take some share of the blame, I think, because, uh, you know, it's all right to leave it to somebody, but he might as just as easily have checked the bag as well. I mean, you tend to blame the caddy, and it's 90% maybe his fault, 10% Ian's. Always look after your own kit, my boy. See you were never in the National Service. <laughs> It's obviously, well, it would disturb anybody. You'd have to have the patience of Job not to be rattled by a two-shot penalty after starting the way he did to rapturous applause. Langer on the second tee. Yeah, I tend to agree with you, Peter. Ultimately, it's the player's responsibility for everything, or you've got to... Caddies have jobs to do, but... I know it was something I did quite a lot was to, to check the number of clubs. I've been penalised for just about everything in the book in this game, but that is one thing that I haven't done. That still leads by one. The whole army chasing him. See how deliberate Langer is, and this can be a bit wearing if you want to be champing at the bit and you want to get on with it. You wonder why everything takes so long. Montgomery for birdie on six. It's already two over for the round. Yeah. Uh, he's got to start somewhere and hopefully that's it for Monty. David Duval. Can't win Bernard Langer today. And he cures an iron up there into the perfect spot to attack the second pin. Always looks very neat, David. It looks like that at the end of the round. Some players look as though they've been dragged through a hedge backwards on the first tee. Campbell finishing off. 68. Good score. It's a testing day. We haven't really had too much dramatic uh, problems, dramatic problems with the weather. Garcia in trouble. Oh, down, down, down. Oh. 
just OK, Garcia. They're very fortunate that it didn't go through into the long rough again. Nicholas Fast, second to the 11 from the where the spectators walk on the right. Just be playing for position with this one, I would imagine. Leave it up about 100 yards short. Leave him a simple pitch into the pin. And that, although normal wisdom has it, that's the wrong side to attack this pin. I prefer it from that side. Nothing behind the pin then. Doesn't look to be in a bad spot. Usman's ball just running into the thicker stuff here on the third. Up ahead on the green, Jimenez. Birdie bogey start for Jimenez. Not easy to keep the ball on the green on this third. It's sort of raised. It slopes off on all sides. for it to fly further through the air than it did. It was a little bit short and it's caught the bunker some 30 odd yards from the flag. Bernard Langer surveying his second shot to the second. And whilst he's got a terrific caddy and Peter Coleman has been with him for so long, it's Langer who does most of the calculations. He works out the yardages, he paces it out himself. Well, actually, it's meterage in his case. In yards, he's got 166 to the front, 187 to the pin. Very much downwind, maybe a little bit off the right, but it's basically downwind. There are many short books in the world, but the Bernard Langer book of careless shots He's right up there with the best of them. Same procedure every shot. Nothing left to chance. Well, there's a very uncharacteristic miss from Langer. His iron play is probably the strongest part of his game apart from his mental strengths. 11th, fast, third shot. Championship leader by one. We seem to jump a bit at that one, but is it online? It is. <laughs> Dougie Donnelly interviewed him the other day. He was a very cool young man. David Dow, David Duval wouldn't have gained too much help from Langer's shot. Hit that very high. Good clever play, just right of the pin. Uphill putt. Well, there won't be too many words spoken between these two players, that's for sure. They're both all business. Tied at the 15th. Almost so much in the first few holes. That's him. Oh, it stopped stone dead. Alex Checker on the second. On the third, this is 
could be his third shot. Thought I heard some rattling in the trees just a little earlier. See how firm these greens are getting now. Nothing but the best shot out of the fairway will hold them. Liam Woosen was Peter said was probably expecting a fly from the left rough and came up short, not in the bunker, in some wispy blades of grass and uh, quite a bit of ground to work with from from where he is. But the green slopes away to the right and uh, as the commentator was just saying it's getting very fiery out here. This is a downwind chip and it really has to be taken into consideration. But uh, you can land it short and just let it roll up to the pin. Obviously just trying to put that penalty out of his mind as much as he can, but how good you are at concentrating, it's not always easy. Difficult to judge these shots, and he's got an uphill eye. Oh, and it came out very strangely. Sort of low and skidding. Sixteenth for a birdie. Nice looking stroke. Oh. Well, that. Wonder what that little mistake, if we can call it that, will cost him come a few hours' time. Bernard Langer from the bunker. Bit of work that to do there, 12 feet for a par. A little bit of bunker get, practice while he has the chance. Just trying to get a little bit more feel for the sand in case he's in another one later on in the round. Lucas Fuss to go to eight under and increase his lead. left he leads by two well Sweden have produced so many wonderful players particularly in women's golf uh, Neumann and Sorensen have won everything between them worm's eye view of David Dubell's birdie putt there He's had a bit of a run at that, but only two and a half feet to negotiate. Moves them at the third for a par. <laughs> two stroke penalty at the first, drop stroke at the third, after what he felt for ten minutes or so was the most glorious start. I'm with the Woosman match, and I'm actually with David Grittman, Secretary of the Rules of the RNA. Now, David, perhaps you can tell us what happened on the second tee. Yes, unfortunately, it was discovered on the second tee that Ian Woosman had started with 15 clubs. I believe he had an extra fairway uh, wood in his bag. Uh, the rules require a player to have not more than 14 clubs, so he obviously had one too many. Uh, the penalty, therefore, is applied to the first hole, and there is a two-stroke penalty for having the additional club. Because he hadn't played off the second tee, that's why it was only two shots, yes? That, that's correct. If uh, if he had uh, played his two shots off the second, the third penalty would have been two shots on the first hole and then again on the second. That would have been the maximum penalty applied. David, thank you very much. Okay. Checker. Playing with wisdom. drops one stroke so both players are going to top strokes at the third checker three previous rounds of 69 played quite uh, beautifully although he, he had a bit of a 
poor end to his round yesterday. Still a 69 was a very good score. Five for Wilson. Nicholas Fast at the short 12th. Playing 193 today, this hole. This is where we saw Tiger rip it over the back of the green. Wind off the left. And he uh, bending as though he's hoiked it left a bit. As long as it's not too far. Well, he's on grass, and that's a good break. Because the pin is way the other side of the green. We're joined by Ken Brown. Thank you, Mark. It's all action, isn't it? Plenty of things going on. Bernard Langer going on steadily as ever. Beautifully done. That must be even more galling for Woosnam. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> to not play together, but you know, here I am. He starts almost holding his tee shot at the first Woosnam that is. And a two-shot penalty because of too many clubs. Bernard holds that monster putt for a par. So many things can happen at this strange game. Montgomery now second at the seventh. Yes, he's just got one back off the card at the sixth. Good chance here. Oh, and that's a good solid iron shot. Oh, well played. And he'll have that to go to six under and right back in the hunt. Val for a par at the second. Opens up with a couple of pars. Woosner on the par for fourth. And starting left, I think, stayed there. So, so difficult it's going to be for him to sustain his concentration. Langer at the third. Good tee shot again from Langer. going on the 10th for a birdie this would get him back to five under up the hill right to left went right to left and tried to come back again now Duval at the third Langer in ideal shape down the third Deval lucky to avoid that little pop bunker on the left at 245 but as it is he's lying okay in the semi rough Monty now for his eagle and that's as close as we've seen anyone for two and he's got to hit it look brown up there he probably thought it might be a lot quicker than some of the putts stun out today, last couple of hours. Doesn't take long to bleach the greens. Very fortunate for Nicholas Fast. Good life, that lie as well, all the green to, to work with. Actually, if you're going to miss this green, that's not a bad spot.
beautiful. Well done. Hard to believe he's two ahead. Long way to go. But in great shape. Does he realise it's the last round, Ken, do you think? Doesn't seem to, does he? 16th, Tiger. drove the green nearly onto the green that chip was for a two Illinan 17th fairway his second a very sensible shot exactly would have been trying to do middle of the green pin high five under Gomery for a birdie at the seventh. Yeah. Five under, three behind. The fast has a two stroke lead. Des Smith, this is on the ninth for a birdie. And uh, he puts very, very solidly with that big one. Well done, Des. Moseying along, lurking. Playing very well indeed. Wilson having a cut at it. Checkers played. Oh, straight in the sand. Impossible to get close to the flag from that side. Plenty of vocal encouragement. Another hole under his belt. Can't see too many players out on the course beating eight under. Would be a heck of a target, wouldn't it? Eight. Monty out here. I mean, he's just had the two birdies, and his crowd's like a football crowd. They're cheering like they're at a they're game on a Saturday afternoon. They're thoroughly enjoying it. I must admit, so am I. Well, didn't really want to be off the fairway. An iron for safety, and that's a bit tricky. Very awkward indeed, Peter. I mean, he could hit anything here. It might even be an eight iron. It's got 179 to the front. It's got to be landing it short, I would think. Yes. God damn it. A couple of good breaks on that hole, avoiding the bunker off the tee, then a nice Freddie Titmus kick to the left. BJ Singh on the 13th for his par. Oh, well done. Keeps him going. Five under par, five holes to play. Quite tricky here for Langer. He's got a lovely line in the fairway, but the wind is fluctuating. Every now and then we get a really strong gust. 169 to the front. third shot now I thought he was in the bunker up by the green but obviously the second shot just dived away and now that was his third shot then I've already seen that one Tiger Woods now for birdie on 16 a little too little too late for Tiger Mark James and Ken Brown have Taking a break. Uh, 
Alex Cheka with a chance of another birdie here at the fourth hole. Oh dear, well, he, he seemed last evening as if the pressure got to him just a little bit, and now he started to drop shots, and now he's left himself a nasty one there for his par. That's the 17th green there in the foreground, and Gillinan is down there lining up his birdie putt. Interesting story, uh, when, when he was winning the amateur championship, he was reputed to be very slow. He addressed the ball in the rough for so long, brought the club head up, and he said, listen, there's a butterfly here on my club head. And one of the spectators said, it was only a caterpillar when you started. <laughs> <laughs> They can be very cruel and very clever, some of the spectators, can't they? Ewan and five under, tied for fourth. Five under for the day. Mightn't be enough, he need a birdie up the last at least to, to post some score in there, Alex. Yeah, but it's an amazing transition, isn't it, from the amateur ranks to the professional game. Now, Woosnam, and things really are beginning to become a little bit disappointing for him. He was so pumped up, ready to go at the first hole. You couldn't wish for worse misfortune. Nicholas Fast on 13, and players walk back 150 yards to this tee. This is where Monty began to come unstuck yesterday. Good safe iron shot. Monty here, 162 yards. He's drawn quite a good lie, but he has to land this ball short of the green. Anything, I think, landing on the front's going to go over the back. Yeah, well, we could see the flag there, just directly in line with the centre of the stand, and that. Oh, that's a magnificent shot there. He landed it within an inch of where he needed to there. Fantastic. Crowd loves it. It's fine when you watched it running along that green, it was very close to a rim where he could just turn and fall off into another deep bunker. But maybe his luck uh, is about to change. Now, Bernard Langer. Good putt from Langer. Good putt, Bernard. It would be for a four. Have that for a four for a par, par, par start. Those three holes are quite difficult. Alex Cheka at the fourth. For his par, his first putt, rather a long way short, and that's what happens when you just lose the nerve. So that's a three, four, five, five start for Cheka. And he goes back to just four under. Sixth green, Mickey Price for Eagle. Sergio and BJ make eagles here today. And the weakest part of Nicky's game is the putter. Tremendous ball striker. Now then, Illinen at the 17th. Well done. Very well played from this young fella. Just one more hole to go of this championship. We go up onto the ninth tee, Garcia. So many have thrown the ball right through this green. Yes, he's shouting, get down. And he's all right. He's got it right under control. That's a beautiful shot. David DeVal on three. Has he hit it? Yes, he has. Just sneaks in the front edge. Okay, Deval moves into within one shot of Nicholas Fast. A major threat is this American player. We go to Fast. 
into 13. A nice little par four, there's 342 yards. And it's just going to hang on, it's perfect for distance. Well, no one's told him yet he's in the Open Championship and right in the dogfight, Alex. Uh, what a great effort it is today. Yes, a young man, he's been a professional since 1993. Here's one who's been a pro for a bit longer than that. Now, Ian Woosnam on the par three fifth. Beautiful transference weight there, really solid into the left hip. And a good shot from Ian. Ironic that one of the best shots we've seen all day, Wayne, was his opening shot. Yes, I mean, what a what a thing to happen. I mean, it's obviously taken everything out of Woozy. Uh, Darren Clark, this is on six, and this is for Eagle. What a tremendous shot. Second shot here for Clark. This is to move him to six under. Darren will get the local fans excited, that's for sure. Well, he's having a wonderful run of great golf. Victory a couple of weeks ago at the K Club. Wonderful finish the week before that at the Irish Open. 64 on the Sunday to rocket him up to second place. Darren Clark becomes the leading British challenger. And Nicholas Fast might be starting to sense the strength of the competition behind him. David Duval with his birdie at the third, getting to seven under par, second place on his own. And then those four players tied for third. Vijay Singh, Sergio Garcia, Langer, and now Darren Clark with an eagle at the sixth. Mika Illinen at five under par with Des Smith, who's gone out in 34. And Billy Mayfair, Miguel Angel Jimenez, also there at five under par. And Colin Montgomery also, of course, in that group at five under par. Tightly packed behind. Greg Owen at four under. And the players at three under include Ernie Els and Jesper Parnovic and poor old Ian Woosnam, who's had four holes full of such highs and lows. David Dixon, the amateur, still level par for this championship and alongside Tiger Woods and Barry Lane. Now, Colin Montgomery, after that wonderful iron shot at eight, could he make it three birdies in a row? And by the slightest margin, he doesn't. That little ridge I was referring to, yes, that one. He kind of thought it would have turned the other way. So he stops his run of birdies, but it's a good four. And he is very much in the hunt at five under. J. Singh, birdie putt on 14. VJ three under for the day. Whoa, there's a way to move to six under. Good putt from VJ, tied for third with Garcia, Clark and Langer. All at six under. Two shots behind Nicholas Fast. As I said, VJ, US PGA and Masters champion in the past. Looking for the third major. Now David Val at this par four. No railway line to worry about. Don't want to let it drift too far away. You go to the right here. Yes. There's very thick rough down there. Good bounce there though, Alex. It looked like he had a bit of a break. Bounce it back closer to the fairway. Monty now at the ninth hole. Downhill par three. This is right at the end of the golf course. Monty, 151 yards straight downwind. He doesn't need to hit this one much more than a yard or two on the green. His distance control on that last shot was fantastic. Hopefully he can do it again. He's talking this one over with his caddy. Wind's just gusting at the moment. Shot here for Monty. Yes, the pin is just seven paces on the green. It's going right at the pin. A 
that's the problem the tailwind and the pin at the front has not a good partnership he's quite a long putt away but many have missed his green completely today thirteen nicholas fast long putt across the green for birdie from fast five under for the day out in 31 30 on 11 on this inward nine but now he has the toughest part of the golf course to finish 14 through 18 will take no prisoners today as we saw yesterday tiger woods who's playing a very quiet part in the final day of this championship and at the 17th He's had the birdie, a couple of birdies in a row. Well, he's battling there, Alex, interestingly. His worst finish in a major championship since he's turned pro has been 29th, and he's currently 28th, although I don't think that'll interest him too much. Iron club for fast at the 14th. Not a bad swing, this, just three-quarter length back swing. Jumps one bunker, won't beat the pair. If the first one don't get you, the second one does. Some skillful bunkering here. Duval and Lang are both very keen to get down the right-hand side of the fairway on the fourth with a pin right over on the left, but Duval's in a not a very nice lie. At least the grass is lying in the right direction. Hold it up, Wayman. Get out. Hold it up. Get out. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Down bunker, into the bunker at the right. One was calling it to hold up, and the other was to get down. And between the two of them, they got it wrong. Well, interesting thing here. We've talked a lot about the bunkers this week. 197 of them, and over the first three days, players have hit it, hit it in the bunkers 1,328 times. As we watch Illinen on the 18th. <laughs> Lots of bunkers waiting down at 18 for this one. He was quite lucky to get such a good lie, and he's been lucky with the bunker. That has knocked his ball oh, right across to within 12 feet. What an opportunity to make a birdie when it looked as though it was all wrong. Bernard Langer has got an even worse lie than Duval, but again, the grass is at least lying in the right direction. But a lot of grass behind the ball, difficult to get any real control on it. It's got 152 to the front, 165 to the pin, but the pin only just over those three bunkers on the left-hand side. Into this really quite strong breeze now. Well, that must have been a terrible lie there, Julian, because he's come up well short of the green in the left in the semi. No shot left, pin tight and behind that bunker. Yeah, that well, a lot happening down here at the 18th as Tiger Woods prepares to drive. Full-blooded tee shot again. You know what happened last night. Straight right he went last evening. Is this follow the lead? Oh, almost the same spot. Well, I don't know if he collided. He certainly stopped pretty quick. He must have hit someone and maybe stayed on the hard piece. Almost the identical shot to last evening. Tiger, he found the ball. <laughs> Isn't a tiger of a different sort here? Second shot, VJ Singh. unusual sort of result. I think he expected it to jump a little bit more, just coming out of that first cut. Now, up at the 18th green, this is this is a seriously important moment. Illinen, who had to jump the fence to hit his second shot, got a lovely bald piece to play it off, where all the spectators had played, then pulled the second shot. No, you don't care. Not everybody that's interested in this championship. Peace and quiet. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Georgie, my granddaughter. 
Tiger's making his way from the tee to find out where his ball is. I think he's on the sort of bare piece where the spectators have walked. There's his card, five birdies in it, but sadly, four bogeys, or three perhaps, three bogeys, but here on the green with a putt, certainly to be the leader in the championship. Completed rounds. I think he has this for 65. That's right, Alex. Right to left it is. Oh, and he hit it too hard. Ooh. Well, that would have been to post a score of six under in the clubhouse, which the way things are going out there could be pretty good and could be the final score. But now he's left himself some work. Back to the ninth and Colin Montgomery putting back up this green. It's a bit slippery at the side there, and, but not slippery enough for Colin. It was a good approach putt. There's Garcia on 10 for birdie. Flag is 25 on, so this is all of 65 feet. Players have had difficulty all week on uphill putts, getting the ball to the hole. Garcia currently six under, coming off a birdie on nine. Nicholas Fast, the second bunker that caught him here on this 14th hole. He mustn't be too greedy, that lip is high. Well, the club blade removed a piece of the revetted turf. But I think he's out and safe and sound. There he is, just short of the walkway. That's a good shot, well positioned. Young men from all over Europe and uh, Sweden, Finland. The only, <laughs> the only great player I know from Finland is on the 18th green. Third shot of Langer on four. What a great shot from where he was. Played a very good bunker shot earlier in the day. Good pitch shot there to keep his round going. He's just standing halfway between ball and hole. Have a little visual of how this ball will curve. Mustn't ground the putter, of course, and he hadn't. But he's got this for 66. Having won the amateur championship last year, who knows what could happen. Darren Clark, third shot on seven. Oh, just catches the down slope. Not bad, not bad from there. That pin today is really tight, difficult to get to. BJ Singh deep in the rough. This at the 15th and getting a nice little bit of run, exactly as he hoped. But it's only a par four. David DeVell in the right-hand bunker on four. Oh, tremendous shot. Two good shots there from Langer and DeVell. Both players missing the screen. Both with good opportunities for par. Elinan with this putt. This putt for a round of 66. Knock this in and pray for a gale to spring up. And he's done it. Last year's amateur champion. It's only a minor miracle that would stop him from being this year's open champion. Five under par, leader in the clubhouse. Tiger's number one fan. Well, Tiger needs a lot of help today. Rain is the open champion. Is almost at an end. Wayne, it's amazing how close in an Open Championship that the spectators get to the players, just even the caddies having to tuck in. Now he's right over there uh, on the walkway. He's allowed to play from there, but he has to take his risk with the fence. You can't move the fence. And loaded with backspin coming from such a tight lie, a very good shot from Tiger Woods. There's that fence you mentioned, Alex. If, you, if the players are within four club lengths of the fence, they get relief from it. 
otherwise they just play it. Now Garcia, this is par putt on 10. He made some silly comments earlier in the week about the Greens last week at Loch Lomond, how they destroyed his chance this week of winning the Open Championship, but this man can roll his ball. Him and F. Out to sixth. Another very good part, another Spaniard going very well indeed. Him and F with that birdie is now six under within two of the lead and a great welcome well as a past champion one of the great things about that is you know that you get to come back every year Alex until you're 65 and and play which is always nice to know well we've got a lot to look forward to in that case could it be this man that will get that invitation? Third shot, though. Yeah. He doesn't like it. As soon as he hit it, he thought it was too much. <laughs> well, there you are. It was just hit so beautifully. Ball turf, backspin loaded on it. And he's got a chance of retrieving the par. His cushion is only one single stroke, and it's Duval at after four holes, it's seven under in second place. Bernard Langer for power on four. Pete Coleman there just lining him up and then as moves away just in time or just before he strokes it. Billy Mayfair. Eagle putt on six. 21 on, so 63 feet. A yeah, good leg putt from Mayfair. Started the day five under, that's to make the first birdie. Now the man in second place is this one, David Duval. <laughs> Full flowing swing. This at the fifth, the par three. Uh, and, and, and. He might hole out in that little pop-up and it slowed him down, I can tell you. That did him a very big favor. If he missed that, he was down in the valley. I wonder who's on his way home there. Probably my, my tip on his way to Canada. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, a marvelous sky today. Beautifully clear, crystal clear. Now, Bernard Langer on the fifth. His concentration is superb, so to his skill. Good shot. Nicholas Fast, 14. This is for par. Right. Always low. Well, that's the first blemish today for Fast. Drops back to four under for the day, seven under for the championship. Yes, and the nearer he gets to this green, the greater grows the pressure. Now, Tiger Woods has had two birdies, 16 and 17. Can he finish with a hat trick? Since April, he's owned all four major titles. The coffee table starting to empty, Alex. He had the four major trophies on his coffee table. Well, he's without two of them now. Birdie part of Darren Clark on seven. Clark six under, and now only one behind. Now 
Out to the tenth. Call Montgomery. In his aggression, you see. The last time he charged a putt, that was way back about the third hole, he resulted in three putts. And it's almost about the same distance again as he left at that occasion. We have a question. Alex from Eldert Brunsma in the Netherlands says, is there a maximum number of strokes a player is allowed to have on a hole, or can he continue to make 15 or 20? Well, the answer to that is there is no maximum, and yes, he can make 15 or 20, although he wouldn't be around for very long. He'd be very hungry. Need to find alternative employment, that's for sure. Up to the sixth, Ian Woosnam. Well, they're a little bit of better fortune. An eagle three for Ian. Brings him back to just one over. One over for the day, and he's well back in it at five under. Moddy now for par on ten. Two, three putts today. Just can't afford those sorts of mistakes. There's too many other hazards around this Royal Lytham and St Anne's golf course. Now out to the fifth, Bernard Langer putting back up the green. And I must say the greens have stood up wonderfully well to this championship. They can easily stress out with this sort of weather and the fact that they don't sort of encourage much water during the event. I think the staff have done wonderfully well. Fast on 15, taking an iron. Well, this is conservative. 15, the toughest hole on the course, into the wind. Okay. That'll hold the edge of the left, the left edge of the fairway on 15, but that is a mighty long way home. David Duval has already taken a free drop away from the sprinkler head. And seems to be taking another one. Rules of official David Pepper keeping an eye on it. He was so lucky, as Alex Hay was saying, that that stopped the ball. If he was down into the dip another couple of yards beyond, he'd have had no shot at all. The one place not to be today. David Pepper, of course, the assistant chairman of the championship committee and the fine referee. Takes control of many events. The Women's Open Championship. He used to come and help control it for as many years at Woburn. Second shot, 15, Nicholas Fast. Took iron from the tee. Well, he can't see much. The flag is down behind the hill. At third, third tower on the right, the third crane on the right, just below that. Just slightly below fast feet. But he does move it right to left the pin today. 21 on four from the left. But this is anywhere center of the greens, a good shot. Thank you. Stop. Sit, down. Sit down. Well, very unlucky. That was a good shot there. has played what I think today is an exceptional round. One blemish was his tee shot on 14, where he made bogey. But he's looked very comfortable, confident. Now back to David Duval, having got relief from that pop-up. Oh! Sorry. I was 
was going to say if he'd popped that in there for a two, he would have. Uh, you could expect him to ask for the pop-up to be removed and taken home and framed. It saved him completely from going down into the valley. So he's the joint leader in the championship, and it's one he would dearly wish. PJ Singh, second shot on 16. Come down. One by one, these players are coming through these last few holes, each trying to post a score that the other players are going to have to catch, laying an alpha power on five. I'll take a break now, Alex, and leave you with Mark James. Oh, that's very kind of you. But thank you very much, and a marvellous day, Mark. I'm sure you're wrapped up in it just as we all are. Isn't it? We have a little look at alphabeticals as they go through, let you know where everybody is doing. But very exciting, Mark. Yes, I was delighted to see Wuzzy make three on the sixth. That'll get everything working again. He knows he's still in it. No one breaking away from the field. Out to the 11th, Garcia, his third shot. This par five, 542 yards. And allowing for a bit of run, has done pretty well there, Sergio. Sergio's six under, 30 he was to the turn, par the 10. And I must say that we've sort of waited all week to be able to see this, these wonderful links in the uh, sunshine. It's been grey, it hasn't rained very much, the wind hasn't got up. The practice days, the players were buffeted about. There's poor Sandy Lad took 81 today, which was unfortunate for him, but they're the blue skies, and I always think the Open Championship's final day should at least be in sunshine. Leaders at seven under. This is gorgeous out there. We watch David Duval, Bernard Langer on the sixth tee. Tough tee shot. Of course, with this helping wind, you can carry the bunker down the left-hand side with the driver, and that's what Duval's going to try and do. It is possible to run out in the far side of the fairway if you get a real good one, 300 yard run out. Well, that's bouncing about in a pretty thick rough and at this stage, Ken Brown has joined us. A bit of a wild tee shot there, Kenneth. Well, be well normally the uh, his best control shot is a left to right flight and this hole requires a draw and slightly overdoing it but it could be okay it's certainly a long way up there our joint leader just playing another little shot from off the green but unfortunately a young Nicholas has left himself another testing putt Bernard Langer out with the driver as well and I can tell you guys in Zenith that Nicholas Fast had a one iron especially made up for him this week. He's a very long hitter and he's been hitting one iron off the tee almost all the time apart from the 11th where he's used the driver. He used a three wood once on the 18th as well, but otherwise one iron. The familiar loop at the end of the swing and that was very lucky. Those were the trees Tom Lehman was in in the last round in 96. And that's actually fine now, and he'll have half a shot at the green from there. I'm surprised he didn't break a wrist or something with that follow-through. Like Arnold Palmer on, on too much sugar. <laughs> to Garcia. Now, can he get a birdie at the 11th? This green remarkably green in colour. And in the greenness, it was probably just a shade slower than he expected. It hasn't drained out at all. Looking at the surface, maybe it was his shoes. Don't throw one away now. You've got a few holes to play. 
50 minutes. Up the little ridge at the seven. Just the par there. Stays at six under. One behind. Colin Montgomery, long iron to 11. <coughs> He's hit a super drive up there. And he looks, I think, as though he likes it. No, too far right. Leave him a long bunker shot to the pin on the left. Nicholas Fast, first blemish of his round came at the previous hole, which he bogeyed here at the 15th. A testing putt, very important. Sweet as a nut. Beautiful putt from Nicholas. Billy Mayfair on the seventh. And this is for a share of the lead. Some putting stroke and some result. Three players on minus seven now. Yes, those three players, Nicholas Fast, Billy Mayfair and David Duval. And then together at six under par, Vijay Singh with a couple of holes left to play. Sergio Garcia just missing a chance to, to join those three leaders. Darren Clark, six under after eight holes with an eagle at the sixth. Miguel Angel Jimenez and Bernard Langer. Uh, also at six under par, and Mika Ilanen finishing with that wonderful round of 66, the amateur champion of last year. Des Smith still going along pretty well, five under par through 12 holes. Par the first three on the way back, Nick Price, and also Ian Woosnam now fighting back in that group at five under par with Rafa Jacquelin. Kevin Sutherland, the Californian, heading a group at four under par, which is completed by Ernie Els and Jesper Parnovic. And we go a bit further down to see the finishing score of 71, one under par from the man who won last year at St Andrews. Let's hear from Tiger Woods. Tiger, it just hasn't happened for you this week, has it? No, it didn't. Uh, I, I gave it everything I had. No, no regrets. I went out there and played as you know, as best I possibly could. And unfortunately, I just didn't, didn't hit the ball the way I needed to. And um, you know, consequently, I wasn't there uh, you know, with the, the last nine holes with a chance. But I had it going for a little bit there. I got off to a bad start today with bogey on one, but I got it going and for three holes in a row and, and looked like I could make birdie on seven, made par there. But if I would have made birdie there, um, if I could have got a few more coming in, you never know. Yeah. Obviously, the target was issued a very low round today. I know you never like to relinquish any title, far less a major. How much does it hurt not to be part of this terrific shake-up that we're seeing this afternoon? Well, I wouldn't say it hurt. You know, it's, it's not life or death, you know. <laughs> uh, I, you know there's, there's no regrets. I, I tried as hard as I could. If I, if I would have given up out there, then I, yeah, it would have hurt. But I, that's not how I play. You, you know that. And I went out there and I tried as best I could. Unfortunately, as I said, I just really didn't get the, the momentum going. And, and when I did this week, I hit a few shots in a row. I'd, somehow I'd, I'd mess it up somehow. With, and, and the momentum would, would leave me. And uh, it's, it's a great leaderboard right now. It's just unfortunately I, I'm, I'm not up there. Yeah. What was the main problem? You seem to be having trouble finding fairways consistently. And when you do that at Lytham, I guess, it's, it's always a struggle, isn't it? Yeah, the first three days. Today I drove it beautifully. Uh, the only bad drive I hit today uh, the entire day was on 18, and I, I drove it great today. Um, unfortunately, I, I couldn't do it the first three days, and <laughs> I put a lot of stress on my game uh, the first three days by, by not driving in the fairway. And, and this golf course, the way it's getting firm and fast, and these pin locations are tough, and you need to be in the fairway in order to control the spin coming in the greens. Uh, as always, you got a terrific reception coming down the last. We'll look forward to seeing you at Muirfield next year. Yeah, I look forward to it. Thank you, Doogie. Thanks, Tiger. Well, he could go far, that young man. Out we go to the ninth, and Darren Clark to par three. Beautiful shot from Darren, and that's the distance of putt I always think he's one of the best in the business at. Nicholas Fast hitting an iron up the 16th hole, blind tee shot. 
picker line in those somewhere in those bushes in the distance and just try and concentrate on making a good strike he's leaning but it's only right of centre and the pins on the left hand side that's in good shape Price at the eighth little from the right this one and Nick Price gets the five under the plot thickens everywhere you look as a potential winner uh, Bernard Langer has parred every hole so far at the par five now the sixth wonderful connection coming from this line he's got a soar over bunkers and you miss as I say you miss the first one the second one gets you third at the par five for Montgomery Fantastic shot. Beautifully done. Right up the face he must have been. Ball popped up in the air. Had a chance of a birdie at the par five. Birdie the sixth and the seventh today. Absolutely key if you're going to stay in the hunt. To the ball and pretty thick stuff at the sixth. I think he's got to play a little right. Get out. Get out. Oh. Get out. Oh. He's got away with that again. He's bumping and doing all sorts of things with the green edges. Mayfair second to the eighth, up the hill to the elevated green. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shot. Can't afford to miss it left. David Duval's getting a fair few breaks, isn't he? Third hole, the fifth, he got stopped by a sprinkler there again at the sixth. Could be ominous, Ken. Indication of things to come, maybe. As Darren Clark puts for birdie. Oh, we've seen him do that a few times this week. And always a beautiful pace on the putt. Still time, though. Out in 34. In the big group at six under. Nicholas Fast asking for the ball to kick. And that's not a bad shot, is it? Stopped a bit quicker than we imagined. Cavernous bunker on the left of the sixth. But Lang has no mug with a sand wedge. A little shy, but it leaves him a fairly straight uphill putt. And he's no mug with a putter either, so he's still got a good birdie chance. He used to be a mug with a putter, didn't he? I mean, I don't think anybody suffered. Ken, you're an authority on putting. He suffered. He certainly suffered over the years a few times. Now, come on, Colin. Always pushed it. So few birdie holes left. I think that was a, a vital one for him to make. There's only really the 13th and 16th that are genuine birdie chances on the closing holes. Well, a lovely view out over the sea. We don't often see it with the tide in. We don't get the water right up to the very edge, but it would appear as if it's visiting today. And even the pier might have made it into damp ground. I'm not sure. And as we swing right, heading away over... St. Anne's to find uh, Blackpool. Any minute it'll come into view. Down by the end of the railway line we go. The very edge, but it would appear as if it's visiting today. Even the pier might have made it into damp ground. I'm not sure. As we swing right, heading away over St. Anne's to find uh, Blackpool. Any minute it'll come into view. Down by the end of the railway line we go. Uh, there's the big dipper. There's number one just coming into sight, and there the famous Blackpool Tower. Quite a coastline of golf, Fairhaven to the left, St Anne's Old Coast to the right, virtually surrounding this place. David Duval after that lucky break with his second shot. Well, that's a circumspect attempt for Eagle. 
Have that short then for his birdie. And looking to break away now from the pack. That would put him eight into the lead. Hasn't put a foot wrong so far, Duval. Scoring-wise, anyway. There's a funny stroke now. We talk about putting actions. You, Billy Mayfield, particularly on short parts. Beautiful putting stroke. When he practices, watch this one. You could whisk a dozen eggs with that stroke, couldn't you, Alex? Yes, it's it's the tiny ones. I, I, you have to. Wayne Grady says he shuts his eyes. He, he wouldn't like it to be infectious. The stroke. Who and shuts his eyes? Wayne Grady <laughs> shuts his eyes. He does. He says, "I'm not going to watch this, even when we're commentating. I'll listen for it dropping." I thought you meant Billy Fay Mayfair shuts his eyes. It sometimes looks like it. Right. <laughs> it's definitely been tried on tour. <laughs> yeah, there are one or two people who say the. You putt with their eyes closed. I always looked as if I did. Now this for the lead, Nicholas Fast, good putt, good distance. He's a very fit young man. We saw him interviewed up at uh, Loch Lomond uh, with my Doogie Donnelly. I mean, and uh, It is just remarkable how they come out of Sweden and they come out of Denmark, they come out of Europe, talented. Darren Clark. And just missing, he missed it one at the ninth and he's left this one short at the tenth and each one will be seen later in the day as a chance missed. Four for Darren, and he stays at six under. Now this is only two shots behind the leader. With a one iron again, 17th tee. Yeah, Nicholas Fast. Perfect. Monty, this is to save his par though. He certainly needs something to happen, even if he holds this one. Well, that's a good start, but from here it's got to be birdies and nothing else. Probably needs three birdies in the last six to have a chance. Currently in joint 16th. Ninth tee and Billy Mayfair. Comes up a little shy on the shortest hole on the golf course. The change in elevation, sometimes it's easy to miss club. The ball goes a little further than you think generally. That's the view from the high tower down to the 17th green. You can see how it wen winds its way, dog legging. Then round we come, the four bunkers I mentioned lying in a line to the front right and then up there to the left. And that's where VJ Singh is driven. I didn't save any money on sand here. It's just full of deep bunkers. Gary Player described Lytham Sand as the, the bunkers as the best. I used to just dig it up. They might have added a bit with the recent additions and numbers. Don't think there's any alternative for VJ, but just to knock it back into play. But he's tempted. You think you can just get a pitching wedge, you can perhaps get it within 10 or 15 yards of the green. High risk procedure, though. Take your time, no, it's going out sideways. Could be his chance is over. Six under has to get down in two to stay that way. I think, Ken, that's the quality of this golf course, isn't it? No matter where you are, 
Yeah. Just okay. one but slight misjudgment, three. and it can be all over. Now, this is a tough one for fast playing, hopefully to just get a little glimpse of the flag over the top. Just about on the middle one of those large towers. Right to left wind would help. Oh, hit it, Lynn. Hit it, Lynn. And Scotsman says hit it, so it's going right. And it clings to the green. Very good. It's quite a long way away from the flag, but there's nothing wrong with that being on the green. Three hundred and thirty five yard drive for Bernhard Langer down the seventh. 206 left to the front and he's really just got to aim for the middle of the green. No better tactician than Bernard Langer. Brilliant. Oh. A very hard bounce though. Just hit the shoulder of that bunker. BJ Singh's third to 18. He really must get up and down here to even have an outside sniff, and that's not his best pitch. Left to right player, that appeared to move the other way in the air. Temperature's moving up into the 70s now, it's a lovely day. And just wandering on for Billy Mayfair. Have that to save his par at the ninth. David Val at seven. Three sixty yards. He's hit the tee shot. And yeah. the, the hole measures uh, five forty-two, but he's got one eighty-one to the front edge and he pitched it right on the front edge and he's looking very very threatening Credit there to this young gentleman, David Dixon. He unfortunately faltered at the last hole. He took a six at the last hole to be two over for the championship. Billy Mayfair's attempting to clean up at nine. Yeah, he goes safely on his way to the tenth tee. He tried to change his putting stroke about two and a half seasons ago and he completely lost it altogether so then eventually just went back to what felt comfortable to him. It would be very difficult to effect a change in, a, in either a putting method or a swing. Sometimes the devil you know is a whole lot better than the devil you don't. <laughs> That's why my swing is it, as it is. <laughs> <laughs> now this man, he's attempted many changes, mainly of course with a putter. Uh, he had, uh, I remember once with Clyde Clark, sold him one for a fiver at Sunningdale. That restored him for about the third visit to the Yips. But uh, the long shafted putter has certainly made a big difference to him and indeed to Ian Woosnam. Very tough two putt this one, Alex. Up a little ridge. Pace and line, both hard to ascertain. Turned left at the traffic lights and went up the road to the news agents. Didn't get it on the top level, did he? Just Absolutely. moved it left. It's getting shiny around that hole. They're the last group, though. Going to be a problem for the members tomorrow morning. Actually, I think they might put a bit of water on them this evening. To the 18th and VJ with a a putt here. They're so hard to read, yes, the caddy's just sort of getting an insect to fly away. He won't touch the surface. 
he's sort of, yes, it is. It's a little insect. He's not showing the line. Big break on this from left to right. Twenty-nine feet exactly. That's as the crow flies. Of course, he's going to set it out a wee bit left of that white line to allow for the break. I think that VJ had made up his mind it was this or nothing. I have to hold it. It's no good going in here at five under and finishing joint third or something. If I could make the six under, who knows what might happen. Nicholas Fast on the 17th, second shot just finding the right edge of the green. He's in a, a very long birdie attempt. Good play there with his second shot. And this would put him in a tie with Duval. Oh, my goodness me. That was a beautiful stroke. Well, he's uh, performed superbly under the most severe of pressures. Well, David Vell, eagle putt on seven. This flag today is very difficult, and this is the best shot that we've seen so far. Big slope up to the hole, left it short, as you can see, but only three feet left. That's to go to nine under. This is David Dixon finishing off a wonderful tournament. <laughs> 74 today. And tied for 30 seconds. That's the number you see on the top left of that box on your screen. Great stuff. And winner of the silver medal. I was just about to say that. <laughs> 70, 71, 70, 74 for David Dixon. Congratulations. Langer now. Really a must putt for him. Well, not finished yet either. Very disappointing. thing to finish. And a putt on the 17th green to get to seven under. Looks like a closing six. I think you can get used to seeing that, Ken, today. And guys are going to come here the last few holes trying to, to get that score into the bunkers. Very penal, gobble the balls up. VJ, good performance this week, those final round 69. Very costly six there on the last. I think there'll be a few stains on the closing fairway from players leaking oil tomorrow morning. Tough finish to this course. Second in driving distance this week behind Davis Love, average 315 yards. He gives the ball a good belt. Star of the future. Actually, on Friday afternoon, drove it just a couple of paces off the front edge of this 18th green, which is unheard of. Eh? Langer now on seven. This is for par. Still, that's a three putt for Langer. Day. Seven pars in a row he started. <coughs> Control always difficult out the rough. Second to Billy Mayfair. Ball stopping very quickly. The 10th and 11th green seem a little softer. Much greener. 10 certainly slopes from back to front quite severely. Players are hitting wedges. 11's in amongst the trees. As we go to Deval cleaning up for his birdie at 7. Ticklish one. Well done. Leads by two. Well, we have word that Billy Andrade is back there somewhere. Second shot here on 14. Well, we 
you've heard the hit there. Have a look at this for a shot. <laughs> Great shot from Andre. <laughs> oh, he's got that to go to six under. Not out of the hunt. Nicholas Fast composing himself on the 18th tee. The tee only a couple of yards. Well, the tee marker's only a couple of yards forward, playing its full 412 yards. Tough drive, though, Mark, isn't it? Oh, it is. There's a row of bunkers across the middle of the fairway, another row a bit further up along the left, another big one on the right. In fact, it's frightening me talking about it. <laughs> He's hit a three-wood, and he loves that. A punch of the fist. I've never seen anyone punch the air after a tee shot before, <laughs> have you? Funny. I know Tiger throws more uppercuts than Mike Tyson on the green when he holds putts, but it's the first one after a tee shot. <laughs> Montgomery and we're here this is for an eagle he's driven the 13th green the par four super effort this is the hole where Monty came unstuck yesterday can remember put his iron into the fairway bunker took two to get out and made double bogey came off the rails a little Duval on the eighth our championship leader Railway line on the right, gaping hole of a bunker on the left, but only an iron this week, downwind. A bit close to the bunker, but skidding off that slope, and that's way down the fairway. Darren Clark, second to the par five, the 11th. Chasing it on. Go on, be the right distance. Good effort. Inevitably, the best place to miss a Lynxland golf course green is at the front, which is the easiest pitch generally. Billy Mayfair on 10. This is for Birdie. Not afraid to win on Billy Mayfair. Good ball striker. It's a ball high. I'd say the conditions this week have really suited him with the lack of wind that we've had. Yes, it hasn't been too strong. Strong enough to make players think, but rewarding good shots, whether you hit the ball high or low. We've seen Duval bring the ball in from the lower troposphere a couple of times. And great for a most unlikely birdie. Beautifully done. Back to back birdies at 13 and 14. Six under. He'll take it though. Takes him into a share of fourth place with Darren Clark, Jimenez, and Bernard Langer. David Duval with a two shot lead at the moment over the rest of the field. But a serious examination is facing the American. Nicholas Fast, great tee shot on the closing hole. Sharing second spot with Billy Mayfair. Garcia and Goosen at five under par with Colin Montgomery five under after 13. Trying to get that challenge reignited. Joe Ogilvie and Raphael Jacqueline, Nick Price and Ian Woosnam with all his troubles. He's done well to rally to five under par. Nearly hold his tee shot on the first and then discovered an extra club in his bag and had to absorb the blow of a two shot penalty. 67 from Davis Love, 68 from Michael Campbell and the defending champion in at one under par. Tee shot of Bernard Langer on eight. All pars today so far for Langer. He needs to start to make some birdies. Missed the good opportunities on the two easiest holes on the course, six and seven. Just looking through the pin sheet here the, today, 13 are on the right-hand side of the greens and five are on the left, and Duval very much a left-to-right player, favours right-hand pins. 
think one of the RNA officials has got one leg shorter than the other. <laughs> Well, get it all the way there. I mean, we want to give it a chance. He wants to give it a chance. He does a birdie here or an eagle. He might be the champ. I've been very impressed at how composed this guy is. Kenny's really. I don't know anything of him apart from what I saw last week. But very impressed. He's just shot at the moment, isn't he? He's had a couple of good finishes recently and gained a lot in confidence. Second in Ireland. Perfect tee shot. High, you know so great maturity this week, Ken. Not an easy position to be in. Just left of the flag. <laughs> Ken, giving instructions just left of the flag. Why not straighten the hole? <laughs> At least he didn't say, watch those deep bunkers. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> always got me. that uh, swing and follow through he has a tendency to hit it left it's a bit of a nervous pull but just don't worry about it get up there line it up try and knock it in yes under this sort of pressure you can hit it sideways that would uh, be safe but okay we go to 11 and Billy Mayfair got to hit it long and over that trap on the left Four foot long rough over the on the back of the left hand trap. A couple of marshals went in there yesterday, still haven't been recovered. That's fine. Not the longest of it has beat Billy Mayfair. It's a fairly low flight, so that'd have been a big carry for him, so favouring the right hand side. Darren Clark, front of eleven, front of this hole that we just saw Billy Mayfair on. This is for Eagle. Four foot left for a birdie. Well, most of the gallery is still out on the golf course as Nicholas Fast arrives to the this 18th green. But this young man has an opportunity to scare the daylights out of all the best players in the world. Posting a score and the players on the course know exactly what they have to do. Clark for birdie. Give him a share of second place. And the Irish fella must be due a bit of luck. I can see maybe a couple of long ones go in the next few holes. Good birdie. Two behind double D. Front middle of the green. Looking down on the 18th green again. And as I said, the grandstand's almost full, but there's still 20 odd thousand, 25,000 other people out around the golf course. This is your dream moment, isn't it? You think to yourself, this putts for the open. If he pops it in, could well be. All those hours and hours of practice. So I always said that winning one of these, Ken, was all about preparation and opportunity. You had to be prepared for if the opportunity came along to try and grab it. It's no good questioning yourself whether you think you deserve it while you're there. Bernard Langer on the eighth. Long putt for birdie, good 45 feet that. He's had a bit of a rush of blood there. Just had a three putt from the back of the seventh. Doesn't want to follow it with another. Pricey for a birdie. So both he and Darren Clark birdie the 11th. Price the six under. 
There we have a look, 39 feet from Nicholas Fast between himself and posting the score of eight under. It's looking good. Oh my goodness gracious me. <laughs> Well, what a great effort there from Fast. Four under for the day. We'll post a round of 67. Amazing, it seems to just turn at the whole side. A yard ago, you had put all the money in the world it was going to go in. Looked perfect, didn't it? Beautiful putt. But great championship for this young fella. May not be the end of it for him yet. Almost odds on, they were saying this morning, for a playoff this afternoon. Yes, he's a bad time to have four pints of lager. Disappointing day for Paul Lurry. Even worse day for Pierre Fulke. He's now 10 over for the day, 5 over for the championship. Just made 8 on the par 3, 12. It's around a 76 for the 1999 Open champion, Paul Laurie. And is he shaking the hand of the 2001 champion? Really good from David Duval. Perhaps Bernard Langer's ball just frightening a little bit. And a terrific closing round for Nicholas Fast. Out in 31, back in 36, 67. This is Monty for a birdie at 14. Currently even for the day, five under for the championship. And he's going to need a couple of these. Well, that was as close as you can get. Someone sneaked up and put cling film over that hole. Laying it for power on eight. Oh, good putt, Langer. That's really important for him. Trying a little low runner here. Real Lynx land shot. Oh, get up. Superb effort, though. And a great tee shot from Nick Price. Don't know how his will finish there. That was criminal. Played it perfectly. Duval now for power on eight. Well, three under today. Birdie's on three, six and seven, and leads by two. Billy Mayfair second to the eleventh. It was a fairly easy swing. Just laying it up, leaving him a pitch in. That lie couldn't have been that good, Mark, could it? Because we've seen everyone going at this hole today. Yes, it was just in the wispy stuff, and then it's real 50-50. Ninth tee, David Duval. Yes. Okay, there's little cut shots that he plays, left to right, pin front right, beautifully judged. Bernard Langer, after watching Duval. Flying it a little bit too far onto the green. We've seen that. Anything that lands close to pin high just releases to the back. Frustrating day for Bernard so far. No, no birdies yet. So fast has finished at seven under par that round of 67, and seven under par is the target. That's what David Duval must bear in mind. But he leads by two. Darren Clark, Billy Mayfair in pursuit. 
And at six under, Nick Price, Miguel Angel Jimenez and Bernard Langer, who's parred every hole of the front nine so far, but he's had to make some longish putts to maintain his position on that leaderboard. The Californian, Kevin Sutherland, with that round of 67, and Mika Ilanen, a splendid 66. And also a five under, struggling to make progress from that position, Colin Montgomery, close to birdie at 14, but staying at five under par, Sergio Garcia, Ernie Els, Raphael Jacqueline, and Ian Woosnam, also at five under par. And Vijay Singh double bogeying the final hole for his round of 69. Billy Andre, Desmith, Desmith, still out there at four under par. And Joe Ogilvy and Jesper Parnovic, also at four under par. Joe Ogilvy with a couple of birdies at 10 and 11. Darren Clark, this very awkward putt. This little ridge, three and a half feet high. It's quite a steep one. Not a very good read there by Clark, but very unlucky now. Lang a long birdie putt on eight. On nine, sorry. Well, a little better first putt than the last two greens. So Langer will have that for nine pars and an outward half of 35. Billy Mayfair on the 11th. Pitched it up just short of the green. That's a little tentative, to say the least. It's won five times on the US tour. To Val to go to ten under. Ooh, very tentative there. Could have started to put quite a lot of distance between himself and the next. Price were very rare too. At the 12th. <laughs> Stays at six under. Almost not allowed to make two on 12, are you? When the pin's cut there. Very difficult, and it's only a guy like Price that could get the ball close. Yeah, someone made it too early and they had to call for a ruling. <laughs> it was eventually allowed. Slinger taps in for his power at nine. Steadiness personified, but may not be enough at the end of the day. <laughs> Darren Clark now. This is for par. On 12. Tough one to read this one. A couple of slopes. The one from the back of the green and the other one coming off the bunker. Difficult to see the line. Good putt. Good putt. Currently enjoying a really great month as <laughs> he's running back there. He throws that off so no one can see him having a sneaky cigar, but then. They watch him all the way back to pick it up. Jimenez moves to seven under. Well, just as things were thinning out, they're clogging up again. Apart from this man, he has a two-shot lead. Tenth tee. And he's hit that straight up the middle. He's just hitting it like frozen rope today, Duval. Mm. A six at a par five. Can't afford to do that at this stage. 
birdie holes running out. Bernard Langenau, tee shot on the 10th. He bogeyed it in the first two rounds and then birded it yesterday. Oh, beautiful. Oh, nice shot. Slightly fortunate there. 37 wins in the European Tour, Bernard Langer. Just got away with that one. That'll be fine there. Have a look at the 10th hole. The shortest four on the golf course, 335 yards. A little sheltered tee. And the fairway are completely unsighted over these two humps. Most tee shots kick to the left and can easily be gathered into the left-hand rough. If you find the fairway, it's a very receptive green that slopes from back to front. The pin today is on the back right, 25 on four from the right-hand side. One of the smallest greens on the golf course. Both players have found the fairway. While we watch these players on 12T, Gene Nisbet has asked the question, and which will be very relevant today with so many players bunched and tied on different scores, if three players tie for second, do does the prize money, how do they determine the prize money? Well, they add the second, third and fourth prize money together and then d divide it equally. And we're likely to see quite a number of players bunched up on the scores at the end of the day. Harrington I saw going through there. He was one of the players who made a two. Three players have made a two on the 12th today. Harrington, Franco and Illinan. This pin only four from the right. No pin today, more than 15 feet from the edge of a green. Hundred and ninety-three yards. There's the pin. Ken's operated the telestrator with a silky touch. Makes a change, one of the people in the back room said. <laughs> Somewhat cruel. Tough shot this. Oh, he's been fortunate if it stays there. That's not bad, that's only 30 feet from the pin. Maybe more than 10, but safe side will be 120. Bernard Langer with 120 to the pin. The ideal position here is pin high left. I will give the straightest putt. Bernard Langer has played the back nine incredibly well. He's played it in 35, 34, 34. Always been a brilliant short-arm player. Well, a little conservative. Bernard's got a straight uphill putt <coughs> there for a birdie. Had all pars so far. Nick Faldo had 18 pars in 1987 at Muirfield to win on Sunday, but somehow I don't think 18 pars for Bernard today will quite get the job done. David Duval with 105 left of the pin, which would probably be normally just about an ideal sandwich. There's quite a lot of wind up there, though, so he's only got to hit that pretty hard, or he may just go for a very soft wedge. Into his face and from the left. Duval's made his score on the par fives. He's nine under on the par fives, one under on the par fours, and one over on the threes. Well, you can look at it whatever you way, way you want there. Very aggressive on the right-hand side, but a touch unlucky. That could almost have been six feet for a birdie. Billy Mayfair to the 12th. Looks like he's just trying to fade it in with the wind. Well, it's a solid shot, but it needs to stop. That's fine. Well played. Like trying to hold the ball on an aircraft carrier runway, isn't it? Jesus. Almost impossible. We're always going to finish in the sea somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Not easy at all. That's a small target. 
11th. This is Woozy for birdie. Long attempt. Seen many eagle attempts here. Come on, Wooz. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow, how about that? Go, Woozy, go. Move Woozy back to six under, even for the day. And if you're just joining us, Ian Woosner got a two-shot penalty on the second tee for carrying an extra club in his bag. He had a two at the first and had to put a four on his card. So everyone delighted to see Woosie right back in it, especially his caddy. Yes, <laughs> uh, those caddy is currently being transported towards seven of the local hospital. <laughs> Thirteenth fairway. This is Darren Clark's going to be first to play his second shot in a divot, unfortunately. So it's a couple of bad breaks he's had. At the twelfth, he could have got a nice shoot ahead, and that would have been nice to get near the pin at the twelfth. And here at the thirteenth, another problem. Only 110 yards and a nice little little wedge, probably just a sand wedge for Darren. Pin in an awkward position there. Efficient swinger, Darren. Quite short. Got a friend who swings it short and tight. Fletch, if you're watching, learn to play in a telephone box. Hope your back's better, mate. Technique out of a divot mark. Just nudge it out with the foot when no one's looking. <laughs> Ken usually works for me, but in this situation that doesn't apply. I always move it back and beat down on it. Did, did you have any other way of playing it? No, that's it? Make sure you hit the ball first. And about 100. He produced a shade left of the flag. Yeah. Played that very nicely. Half a chance of a birdie. Deval on ten. Good shot from Deval. He lives in Jacksonville, Florida, near the tournament players club there and they have brilliant practice facilities chipping and putting facilities Jimenez going with a putter reasonably commercial tenth hole Bernard Langer up the green he didn't want to have another rush of blood on this one because it goes slightly down past the pin. Great view there. Just gave it a fraction too much, but a really good roll. He's going to have to just hit it a fraction closer with his irons. Changed to a different ball at the start of this year and a new set of clubs, and since then he hasn't looked back, Bernard. That was Billy Mayfair on 12. So we've only seen three birdies on this hot par three hole today. <laughs> this would be a nice little save for Duval. He's shown a lot of adaptability with those little chips around the greens on this Lynx course. Moving steadily along. Can't really see what he's thinking with those shades on. Very sharp, bright blue eyes behind them. He certainly seems to know what he's doing most of the time. I think we should say well done to Paul Smith and his greenkeeping staff. Done a splendid job this week. the tee shot of Deval on 11. You could see him riding it a little bit as it was going right, but safely in the edge of the fairway. Birdie, birdie, birdie here on 11 for Deval. Well, someone went of his length, and as Julian Tut just said, nine under for the par fives this week.
Well, Holt. Good three. Stays seven under. A couple behind. Bernard Langer clearly doesn't have David Duval's a length off the tee, but nonetheless, he's birded twice here, fired it the other time. Signalling right, shouting for. And I think it stopped short of where the spectators walk, so that'll be it a is short of the spectator walk. As uh, Julian said, stop short. Be chopping out and going with a no no and wedge for his third. Billy Mayfair on 12 for par. Mayfair one under for the day, coming off a six on the 11th. That might prove to be very costly at the end of the day. Three behind a valve, five time winner, as Ken Brown has already mentioned. Price, sorry, over the back of the 13th green. Awkward shot. He should swing back from there a little bit. Very well played. Was he at the 12th? <laughs> Dragged it a fraction left. And a touch hard. really only got about four or five yards deep and wide an area to land it on that 12th to get it close Darren Clark on 13 quite a big swing from the right just slightly overread it stays two behind Who can put the final thrust in? <coughs> so Darren Clark can't break out of the group at seven under par, two shots off David Duval's lead. Ian Woosner moves into the group at six under par, but Nicholas Fast has set the target seven under par with his round of 67. He'll be going somewhere quiet, I should think, shortly to watch the next couple of hours of action with great interest because it's a tough target he's set. When he came off the course, he talked with Doogie Donnelly. Uh, Nicholas, congratulations. You've just played probably the most important round of your life and turned in one of the best scores under these circumstances. You must be very pleased with yourself. I am. I played uh, very good out there today. Made a few mistakes, uh, putted fairly well, and I uh, was quite happy with the effort I gave it. Yeah. And, uh, what a great start you had, which obviously is important. Yes, but I, I really played well, and uh, I got my chances, knocked in a few of them, and uh, and really gave it all I had out there. I knew I had to 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 gain the ground on the front nine because it was obviously playing very tough on the back nine, um, and and I did that. Uh, you never know if you're going to shoot a really low score, but I, I gave it all I had, and, and I did shoot a fairly low score, yeah. And I hit two great putts at the 17th and 18th, but they both just stayed out, didn't they? Yes, a little <laughs> bit annoying. Obviously, I would have liked to be closer, but I really had a good feel for, for the putt, especially on 18, and, uh, and it was looking to me like it was going in all the way there. Now, it's a bit disappointing, obviously, but I mean, great putt and great round. What can I say? I, I gave it all I had. Seven under, nine under leads at the moment, but with that back nine to come, what are you going to do for the next hour or so? Well, I haven't had time to think of it, but I'll have to eat, obviously, and uh, maybe work out just slightly to keep my body fit for for playoff if there would be one. I don't feel that seven under is going to be enough, but uh, you never know. The back, back nine are playing tough. Wonderful day, whatever happens, Nicholas. Many congratulations to you. Thank you. Played in five Open Championships. Prior to this one, Nicholas Fast and never qualified. Always failed to qualify, so a special week for him. Familiar face of Sergio Garcia. Very talented young Spaniard. Difficult putt this on 16. The hole is sitting up on a little bit of a, a hump.
Good effort both for Garcia. Needs two birdies on the last two holes to have any chance. Seven under already in the clubhouse. But the 17th and 18th holes ranked second and fifth hardest holes on the golf course. Bernard Langer found it in the right-hand cabbage. This is just a chop out. Mustn't get greedy. Greed is a terrible thing on the golf course. Well, that's well done. See how much further there that the Val had hit the tee shot. Langer, not quite as long through the air, had to try and take it a little further to the right. This is Nick Price for his par at 13, and this is down and across, and this is a horrible little putt. Deval now, second shot on 11. Flag on the left-hand side of the green, wind into his face. the bunker that we saw Monty in earlier. Monty played a splendid <coughs> shot out of it. Sam problems for Woosnam. Little floaty one. Oh, magic, magic, magic. Well done, Ian. Hasn't he done well? I think we can give him his par at the 12th there. So six under. Billy Mayfair at 13. Traps both sides of the fairways. Fairway. Just got to keep it straight with the crosswind. It's heading for one of those evil little bunkers. Laying a third shot on 11. stunned about that. Langer's iron play is his strength and that is way off line. Bernard I think just a little frustrated. Ten pars today. No bogeys, no birdies. always turned all his stumbling blocks into stepping stones somehow or other. Billy May Fair down the left hand side of the 13th and an ideal angle to get at this pin cut five in from the right and just 17 yards on. His total yard is 118 yards to go. Into the wind and from the right there might be yeah, a little punch one. shot, yeah, just, just a little wedge. Beautiful afternoon out here now, almost cloudless sky. Just a comfortable one. You see, judged that tee shot perfectly, laid it up short of the left-hand traps, leaves a slightly longer pitch in. But he's in good shape to attack the pin with just a wedge. Shot to, to Deval on the 11th. Well, the players have shown all week if they do have a good stance or a flat stance in these bunkers that they are quite playable. Great shot there from Deval. So if he nudges that one in, it'll be 10 under for the par fives this week. Darren Clark, a perfect drive down the middle of the 14th fairway. A bit of breeze coming from the left, 123 to the front. That's the key number for him, because as we've seen all week, this green runs, the ball runs away from front to back very quickly. Just a wedge. Oh, Darren. Darren. 
a touch safer than he was imagining. Megalanko Jimenez from the middle of the 13th, just cutting in a wedge into this right pin position. 113 yards for him, holding quite well against the breeze. This is Langer's great strength around the greens. He's brilliant. Tough chip, though. He's got his work cut out for him for his 11th par in a row as Langer. And his playing partner, David Devell, got a chance to go three in front. And I'm going to leave you now and give you the familiar voice of Peter Ellis. Thank you, sir. And the familiar figure of Ernie Ellis, who's five under. This to go six under. I've seen a lot of lipped out putts this week. Well, what do you reckon to that, Peter? It's amazing. Sometimes, some courses that just happens. Other courses you just see everything diving in. Alex. Moving over to the 11th and Bernard Langer after that slightly steamy chip. He's got this one back up and over. A slope on the edge of the green for his, bur sorry, for his par. He chopped out of the rough of course. It is third right of the green. And that's a very bad six for Bernard. Drops him back into a tie for seventh at minus five. Laura Roberts now at the 18th. He's just gone four at the 15th. So three at the uh, 17th, I should say. And this one is in it. What a way to finish, 4-3-3, three, three, and that's four rounds of 70 for Lauren Roberts. And what wouldn't some folk out there give for that finish today, 4-3-3. Three, three. Now back to our leader, uh, David Duval, beautiful bunk shot, and he converts that for another birdie. So David Duval hits double figures. He's 10 under par for the championship. And that's the first time that's been achieved this week. 13th green, Miguel Angel Jimenez. And this to break out of the tie at minus seven. Close the gap on David Duval. Starting to look ominous, a three-stroke lead. That's a lovely par. Well done. Mechanico, as they call him. Well, you have him on the leaderboard now at eight under and just two behind Duval, but you only need one little mistake on this uh, Lynx, one wrong bunker shot, one bad stance, and two shots can be wiped away just like that as we watch Darren Clark here at the 14th. And again, another beautiful putt just leaves this small tap in, but it's birdies that Darren needs now, not just pars. He stays at seven under. Billy May fan out the 13th for a birdie. Duval now coming to the dangerous stretch of holes. He's been chased, but now uh, people will be looking for mistakes or a bit of good fortune, a mixture of all sorts. Not an easy hole, this, the 12th. The last of the par threes. Well, so far this week, David Duval has been minus nine on the front nine and one on the back nine, and in Maynooth has been one on the front nine and seven on the back nine. 
188 to the pin, which is only nine over the bunker. And this last pair have just gone on the clock on the 11th. Perhaps no great surprise that, with Lang having a bit of trouble. For the viewer at home, that means they're playing a little too slowly and some ruthless official is uh, following them with a stopwatch. And that's a horrible feeling when you're playing a round of golf, uh, more so when you're uh, the last group out in the open, but it has to be done. Well, that ball dropped into the bunker. I was making the point of the deep bunkers. If you get the wrong stance, the wrong angle, you can lose two shots just in the, just like that. Here's Bernhard Langer. Pyramids to the left, bit of hospitality across there, but nobody's worried about that. From here, that bunker on the extreme right of the green, the pin, you can see just fluttering above it. Sunday position, as tight a position as you could ever have on this green. Doesn't look as though he's rushing, does he, Alex, uh, through being on the clock? I think he's uh, just doing his normal thing, scrupulous in matters of getting ready to hit the ball. Well, he played away wide from the bunker that protected the flag, and he's got a long bunker shot from there. It all depends now how Duval's ball is lying. Menez at the 14th. That looked no more than an eight iron. And that's a magnificent shot from Woosnam. And what a brave, courageous fight back this is. Mayfair at the 14th. Alongside him is today, who's found the bunker down the right-hand side. Oh, the old gravers are at work already. Uh, do you think they dare just, just sort of limbering up? A bit early, perhaps, to start... Uh, Chipping away. Hmm. But the way Duval has been striking the ball today, uh, it might be, well, we have to just wait. I don't think we'll start operations just yet. Very skillful. At least Severiano Ballesteros won't win this year, Peter. <laughs> he has to start a week early for that. I don't know how he ever got the cup ready for the presentation, but hey, you see his beautiful round so far from Duval. To the 16th and Parnovic, a chance for an eagle three at this 16th hole. And he's driven the green once again as he did uh, last evening. 359 yards this hole, now it goes right to left and left to right. And the caddy, as it went left to right on that last few rolls. Well done, Jasper. Twice he's finished second, once fourth in this great championship. This will take a bit of skill. He's on a down slope. He's going to run. Well, that was his almost as good as he could possibly do if we give him half a dozen shots he might have got one a bit nearer nearly hit the flag thirteenth green in Wisdom's birdie putt like a lot of players needs to hold a couple of 25 footers you're not going to want to be worse than 800 I don't think 
It's a good roll. Oh, what a beauty. No down was. He's moving. Seven under. Those legs will be working away again. Great stuff. Interesting there, uh, Mark. It was a marker almost directly in his line uh, from his uh, companion there. And he just left it there. He didn't move it to the side, put it out, went round it. Very good putt. Well judged. Jimenez down you. the last of the bunkers on the right-hand side of 14. I really don't think he can get to the green, 165 yards, but must make certain he doesn't get any in any more bunkers further down this fairway. No, he's played out safely. Well, we've seen many players trying to achieve a lot from those bunkers and hitting the faces. We watch Darren. Second shot, 15th. Beautifully struck long iron, and he hit a good drive too. You can't hit two better shots than that, really. Just needs a bit of luck. The vow for a par at the 12th. No. So that just tightens things up a little bit. He drops back to nine. Nine under. There's one stroke ahead of him, who possibly is going to drop a stroke at the 14th. Almost to the day of the 50th anniversary of Max Faulkner's victory in this championship at uh, Royal Port Rush, 1951. I was privileged to be there. Pennard Golf Club are doing him proud, the big dinner and affair down there. Max is playing. I hope you're having a good time down there, Max, and all your chums say, uh, send you best wishes. Well, Bernard Langer from his bunker shot got the putt, made a three. Yeah. And he's picked up a shot uh, on Duval. Awkward shot for Billy Mayfair for his second on the 14th. He's on a slight downslope. And that's going to uh, add to uh, the strength of the club. He's got 155 yards to go, just 140 to the front. And this green tends to run away from the players. Pin behind the right bunker. good for distance had an email saying what does pin high mean it means level with the flag it means you're the sort of perfect distance you're not in the hole you're whatever distance you are left and right but level with the hole now here's a good week's work for this man Des Smith for his power at the final hole well done Des 47 years of age two birdies two drop strokes a 71 excellent play 74 65 70 71 they're in 15th spot and of course for next year the top 15 in this year's championship will be exempt so that was a big putt to make for des his uh, companion for the round billy andrade of the united states and that also a four and that also a 71 and four under. A third shot for Jimenez on the 14th. Strong wind from the left, 120 yards to go. Just a wedge. It's a good shot, just lacked a bounce. We haven't seen Monty for a while. He's uh, one over for the day, still four under. Drop one at 15. Joe Ogilvy, the American, he's one under for the championship, just taken seven on the 15th. So things starting to clear up a little. Now this little putt is for a birdie for Parnovic, who drove the par four, 16. Still uh, only three off the lead. Well, Lauren Roberts finished 3-3, three, three, so it can be done. Now, Langer. Interesting how people see shots differently. Bernard with an iron from the tee. We've seen this green driven several times uh, during the week. We've seen the 16th driven twice by Parnovic. 
This is okay as long as you don't put it in one of those early bunkers. It was over there. That just seemed to die and stalled on the wind. He's come up well short and much left of where he wanted to be. Playing extremely safe there. It's 230-odd uh, yards to that first trap on the left from the tee. Berners only hit that about 190, but it, at least it's not in a bunker. So that's a positive. Duval trying to do what Langer was trying to do. And that's fine, laying well back, dead safe. Very interesting swing of Duval's. Uh, this is a big putt. Yes, Darren Clark, this time about 18 feet. Broad stands, beautiful smooth stroke, aiming for about a foot of break right to left. And he's not given it enough. You could almost tell from the moment that he hit it, he was perhaps not convinced that it would come back. Another par. A par where birdies are needed and all opportunities must be taken if he's going to win this championship. It's such a, such a tight affair right now. Had he knocked that in, he'd only be one shot behind the leader. And he knows it. He's missed about three in the last uh, hour of that distance. 14th green. Long putt for Mayfair. Cheers are ringing out all around the course. Mm. Mayfair six under, three behind. Monty, this is the 16th, I think. I think 17th. All right. Oh, what a lovely touch. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> well, hands of a surgeon there to do that. Brilliant. That was for a par, incredibly. Takes Connor to five under. <laughs> <laughs> Langer's ball actually is lying pretty well. He's in the the very um, burnt sort of rough, so I think he, he should be able to get some grip on the ball, and it's into wind anyway, so there shouldn't be a great deal of run on it. There appeared to be a, a dark object. Can you turn all mobile phones off, please. Thank you. It wasn't mine. Miguel Angel, this is for his power at 14, to going in that right-hand trap. Oh, it's a good attempt, but just died off at the hole. So he goes back to seven. Duval has a two-shot lead again. being over on that side, Lang has the advantage of a good line into the pin over on the right hand side and it's down in a little valley so if he gets it close it should gather in towards the pin. Great start. Well that's a, a fairly good recovery from Bernhard Langer to the green as Peter was saying, you can hear the chairs, people being welcomed, welcomed onto every green, not just to 18th. Langer. From Langer to Duval, second shot. Anything pitching short of this hole 
has tended to stop and spin back. So you're pitching into an upslope from this distance. I don't think uh, we've seen too many go past this hole. Our leader by two from Nicholas Fass, who's in the clubhouse, having gone round his 67. Just got on the top of the bank, and that's left him a very holdable putt. Excellent judgment of distance. To the 14th and Billy Mayfair. Another return putt, and he's got that one. He's really having a crack at every first putt. He hasn't left any of them short. Lucen at the 18th, playing with Sergio. So the putt coming back for a 71. And Sergio is just one under today, five under for the championship. Ian Wisnam. Second to the 14th. He likes it. He's staring it down at the pin. Get up. Oh, yes, good shot. Because <laughs> he's rolling now. We'll have that to close the gap. And whatever he finishes, Mark, everybody's going to subtract two as we go to the 18th. And Sergio, Sergio Garcia at five under, one under for this round, part for 69. That's a good part. It was the perfect line. It was just a little too firm. Two very talented people on the screen. This young man has a, a great future in golf. Sometimes says a few things that he might regret as he gets older, and thinks back about what he did. Yes, he's had a touch of foot in mouth disease, hasn't he, Alex? <laughs> Darren Clark in the rough, quite deep rough, but it's sitting better than he might have expected here on the 16th. He's got himself 140 yards to go, which it really isn't what he wants here at all. I'm quite surprised in the circumstances he didn't have a little shy at this green, which Nick Price did, and put it into the bunker right next to the flag. A good shot, but Darren's got a tough shot down here to stop it out of here. See the flag there, just above the dry grass. What a shot, what a magnificent shot from Darren. And just the glazed green allowing it to slide past. Wonderful recovery there from that thick rough. Out for the cigar. When do you think the size of a cigar becomes an artificial aid? You know, you can send it, test the uh, direction of the wind with a good old strong puff or you can lay it on the ground and line up with your drives on it or what? Smoke signals I Smoke think. Smoke signals, all sorts of stuff. Langer at the 13th. Steve Goosen finishing off with a par. A good solid championship. Finishes at four under in 14th place at the moment. And he's had a few good weeks' work, hasn't he? In the US Open, the Scottish Open. Now, David Duval, after that fine iron shot in here at the 13th, it's, well, if there's a Easy, an easy hole on the course, you would say, this one, although many get in trouble. But this is for a three. It's 
it's a good putt. You see putts heading for the hole here, and it's just a question of the speed. They, they allow the right line. But all of those that have seemed to die just the distance to the cup have been the ones that have gotten into the hole. Others have spun out sheer edges on this Lynx turf. Sergio finishing off at the 18th. Seventy. Seventy it is. Uh, that's well played. Uh, here's Wisdom for a birdie. Discovered he had an extra club in his bag when he got on the second tee, having nearly held his tee shots of a two-stroke penalty. But he's battled back amazingly well. This to go to eight under. Oh, we thought it was turning, but it wasn't. I'm sure there'll be much written about this uh, extra club. It's very easy to blame the caddy or the player, but usually they have someone on the tee who takes a survey of all the clubs that are used and uh, uh, that number of people checking all sorts of bits and pieces. I'm amazed it slipped through the net. Yes, right, I think right. they only do that on the first day, Peter. That's, uh, <laughs> we'll have to review that as we move to Parnovic. 17. Rather like the faux pas with Harrington's card at the Belfry when it was, uh, wasn't was signed correctly when there were enough people in there to check these things out. Wilson finishing off at the 14th. Two beautiful shots he played in there and it so nearly got a birdie. who was one under for today David Val at 14 is that right is that gone the trouble hmm? oh dear that sounded awful I think it hit and they caught him right on the knee and hit the fellow in the red pants yes it did Clever of him to wear red pants, it covers up the blood. <laughs> <laughs> the tracks are bulls. Darren Clark for his birdie on 16. Yes, well done. Right in there now with Deval in trouble. He deserved that one and he deserves a couple more. Yes, he's had lots of putts, I can think of at least 10 that just skimmed past the hole. Final group into the famous five. Don't know what Indy Blyton would have made of it, but Lang has played the last five holes here in one under, and Duval in two over so far, and he started back in a spot of bobber. from Langer. Right. Been together now for 40 years mm. and it don't seem a day to what are you doing here, Monty even two? for 72. Come on, come on, come on. That one for a 72 for Colin.
Now, Darren Clark, who's moved very close. No, what's that? That was an unusual flight there, a nice long, low running hoop, but it doesn't want to run any further. Oh, what a shame. You could just see the overspin on that ball, just heading it straight towards the sand. He probably thinks he's okay as well. Any else? Two lovely shots to 18. This to go to six under. Yes, well done. If I take him into tie for sixth. And a good solid solid championship for any. No fireworks. Ian Woosnam. Well, he drove that ball with a straight bladed club. And it winds its way down to the little hollow. And I think that's pretty good. I think he's striking the ball as well as he ever does, has. 72 for Colin. Just another championship slip by. So near and yet so far. Gave it his all, but it gave it his all, and it just was not to be. Tied for 14th at the moment. <laughs> Interesting little banter, bit of banter going on between Deval and the Mancunian solicitor whose right knee was hit. <laughs> He's got a ball. He was threatening to send, but thought Duval probably wasn't worth the money anyway. <laughs> the problem, though, for Duval now is that the wind is hard off the left. He's got a severe hanging line. In other words, the ball is well below his feet, which is going to encourage a left to right flight. And he tends to hit it left to right anyway. So he's going to have to aim this quite a long way left, particularly with the pin tucked away in behind a bunker. David. Well, chase it. Fairway's firm. Plenty of chase and he's avoided the bunker. He looks like the coolest man in the arena. He's had one bogey in the last couple of holes. Over to the other side. Julian, what about this one from Bernhard? Super drive, perfect position down the left-hand side. He can see the base of the pin just about. 141 to the front. Either a very smooth eight or a good nine. And that's a good shot from Bernhard Langer. Very good shot indeed. Well, it's still anyone's championship. There's no question about it. Nicholas Fast in at seven under. He can do nothing more but wait and watch and wonder. Miguel Angel Jimenez, he's been in a bunker on this hole. You don't go far from those. Splashed it out, hit it onto there. And uh, just got to take the medicine sometimes. Thank you, Bogey. Fencing there down the right-hand side of 18, and there you see on the other side of it, Jesper Parnovic. Now, it's all well worn and walked away across there. And uh, Jesper, Jesper is six under for the championship, one under for this round, and I think he's going to elect to play it. He can't have the fencing removed. Quickly, though, to Mayfair for a par of the 15th.
amazing there. That putter slices across the ball. And he does it time and time again. Now you see him, this, this ball, he is within four lengths of the fence. He could go over the fence at no penalty, but he'd be dropping it into grass about 15 inches deep. But he has no, no way of removing any fencing. He's going to take it on, and it's got a tight lie, which means he can get backspin. If he chooses the right club, he might take on that flag position. Those spectators may well get a mouthful of dust in a minute. Peter, this looks no more than a seven iron. No, he doesn't like it. He may have turned it over, may have pulled it away. There it is, yeah, yeah. He had to hold it up, he knew that, but he was worried of the bunker's front right. The last minute, a little bit of right hand came in, and now he's in trouble on the left. Eminus. Up in there somewhere, I think, at the top of the grandstand. Up there. <laughs> he looks happy, but this could be the end of his championship hopes here. <laughs> Remember my old pal David Thomas coming here with a, a two fours to win the championship. Beautiful drive, hit a seven iron, a little bit heavy, came up five or six yards short of the green, took three more to get down from there, tied with Peter Thompson. Lost to the player, but he is a man who's hitting the ball quite beautifully. But he's tugged it, hold your line, he said, and that's dived in. Ooh. He struck the ball so majestically today. David Duval, front left on the 14th. That was a pretty good second out of the cabbage over there. We'll just be rolling this one up to the whole side. And that's the job well done on this hole. Barring accidents, it's another par tucked away. Up in the grandstand is where Darren Clark's ball flew. If it stayed up there, then there's no problem because he uh, he would get into one of the dropping zones. They have several dropping zones. And Mike Houston's down there. Tell us, Michael, what's happening? Well, we've had a bit of fun and games around here because uh, out of the bunk fairway bunker, unfortunately, Garen got. Darren got it rather close to the, the pipe on the club and uh, hit it into the crowd, into the big gallery, into the big grandstand on the right. And he's now, uh, Mike Shea, the referee from the USPGA, has put him into the nearest dropping zone to where the ball crossed the, ha the impediment. Yes, we could see the white paint around it. Bernard Langer, a right to left break on this spot. He's read it. Yes, he has. That's a beautiful putt for Langer. And that birdie takes Bernhard to uh, six under through the 14th. Clark's third, 70th hole, 71st hole. and 18th here have been the graveyard of many over the years. Jabal tapping in for his par. Two and a half feet, though. No, he looks rock solid. Moving serenely on. Mm -hmm. Ian Woosnam in a dreadful spot. Down there. Oh! he nearly well he needed to hit the flag really with that at the 15th that's a lush spot there's nothing dried out down there thick and damp
Well, as all the matches close in on the last handful of holes, you can expect the noise. All the spectators, thousands and thousands of them gather. And here, Peter, a little bit of a mistake with the third shot, eh? Well, the tee shot was the one that caused the problems, Alec, wasn't it? He just hit it too far. down on it, came up and rattled and almost pitched straight in the hole. That had just been uh, a touch either way that could have jammed in the hole. And funnily enough, there's almost a little anticlimactic feeling around the course at the moment. Duval's leading by two, with Clark doing what he's doing here. Jimenez having dropped a couple of strokes. That's his second up to the 16th. Woo's him in trouble. And the challengers are just easing the way for Duval a little bit, although he wouldn't know that. Well, here he is. A swing, quite unique swing. Oh, unique by all means, but that's another wayward tee shot, so even the pressure getting to him. Down the 15th. Well, he could be in heavy rough, decent rough, or bunker. Well, another cut 18 for a bogey. Put his second into the sand. Level par 71 today. Minus five. 279 for the championship. Fulton really... had a nightmare of a day, though. He's gone from the tide for sixth place to uh, from six to 64th. 13 over par today, Fulka. Had a nightmare. Keep him away from sharp objects and ropes, I think, Peter. Absolutely. He's had a oh, dreadful day. So's he. So's he. Suddenly... All caused by hitting his tee shot 10 yards too far. Where's the cigar? There it is. There it is. Well, plenty to think about as he moves to the next tee now. Now back to Ian Woosnam at 15. Having hacked it from that rough, nearly caught the pin. becoming very aggressive and taking chances in order to produce some result and as so often happens the, the reverse becomes the case way down there Duval our leader who's off the fairway Julian Paul's not lying too badly in that he can get a club on it but it's in that very strong wispy grass that wraps around the club head so there's a real danger of squirting it left there's no way you can get up from there he's still got 211 to the front so he really just got to lay up find the fairway back to Woozies this was bogey Still in there. Plenty to play for. Finished top four. He'll be zooming up the Ryder Cup points into the top ten, I think. So, still got a knuckle down. But as Peter Alice suggested, David Duval does seem to be taking a strong grip on this championship. Three shots clear of Nicholas Fast, who's finished with that 67. Ernie Els has finished with his 69. Darren Clark, Billy Mayfair, Jimenez, Woosnam, Langer, all trying to put the pressure back on Duval, but he leads by three. Duval. Just knock it down this. 
There are bunkers across the fairway. Maybe a little left. No, he's got it in the position there. Oh, my word, he's chased it on the green. Well, that deserves to win the championship. He's chewing the cud. <laughs> I never say he can't do anything again. That's outrageous. Quite outrageous. One good thing about him, he looks the same whether he's playing well or badly, whether it's sunny or rainy. I'd like to know what he eats you. It's like that sort of uh, Kendall cake. Well, that was a wonderful shot from Duval. Bernard Langer, as ever, course management, top class. Down the right-hand side with the pin back left. 190 to the front. Ball just a little bit above his feet and on a slight upslope, so he'll need to take a little bit more club than he would if it was lying flat. Darren Clark down the last. Oh, he'll be ruining that 17th hole. Langer now, second shot. Duval in about 15 feet away, in two. You know, they're all suddenly, they've all suddenly decided to, let's be nice to David Day. And he's played a couple of uh, excellent shots. Very few poor, silly shots from Duval today. And unless something very untoward happens to him, it looks as if he's very much in the driving seat. Mayfair at the, the 16th. And pretty well judged. The title is certainly in Duval's hands. Yeah, there was so much excitement about an hour ago. It was so tight. And then some, uh, a couple of mistakes, a bit of bad luck, a couple of careless shots. And suddenly Duval, there's a three-shot lead on Nicholas Vath, who's finished off an hour and a half ago. Half a minutes. The 16th, on the last four holes in this golf course, there are 62 bunkers, so there's a lot of things that could happen on the last few holes to devour. It's certainly not in the bag yet. But I have to say that approach to the uh, 15th was brilliant. Woozy now. He's got 121 yards to the flag, 95 to the front, the pin back 26. Really needs a birdie now. Shame about 15, but it's still three holes to make up for that. Quiet there, please. Like just three places from the left edge of the green. Beautiful, magnificent shot. He struck the ball handsomely today. And of course the two-stroke penalty on the second tee, having nearly held his tee shot at the first, to find that you've got an extra club in your bag. Uh, Soul destroying. Nicky, Nicky Price in the rough on the right of the 18th here, not good at all. He's got, uh, I don't know whether he's going to be able to get there even with it. He's got 160 yards to go, something pretty lofted to run it and run it and run it because it's pretty hard now, this fairway in front of the green. Just got a few stalks of grass behind the ball, it's going to make this very difficult. Straight along the ground, impossible.
Lang has pitched to the 15th, third shot. This I don't think is as bad as it looks. The ball's lying okay. And as I've said before, normally he's so good at these little shots around the green. Now Wu just holds onto the green. Now it rolls into a little hollow there. Darren Clark second at 18, 156 to go in the middle of the fairway yet again. Well, fortunately, dragged it away. Poor shot, hit the bank and threw it towards the flag. Needs a birdie to tie with Fast. Strange last hour or so, Ken. Yes, all the gladiators battling out are suddenly making it a little easier for David Duval. Clark's nasty six at the 17th. Ever in the heat of battle, Houston. Or is it Mark Amira? No, it's Houston. Concentrating, Darren, because if you pop that one in, you can still take the title. Meanwhile, back at the 15th, Langer for a par. Asking a lot to hold this one, but it's doing well, uh, it's just too wide. A good tee shot from Bernard, but not a particularly good second. And that'll be, at best, a five. Lots of Ryder Cup points at stake. Man would love to be at uh, the Belfry come September. Dubao. For a birdie here at the treacherous 15th. This one up and get the line right. He's still with the, in with a shout. This for a birdie. Go on, go on, go on. Well done. Fantastic effort. Safely in. Says at 10 under. Three ahead of Wilson. Nicholas Fast is already in the clubhouse at 7 under. 
Clark to get to that number. This green a little bit quicker than some of the others, very shiny. Go on, he's got a chance, you know. Oh no, same as Nicholas Fast. Boy, he's had some a touch of the nears today. Seventy today to go with seventy, sixty-nine, sixty-nine. A terrific performance from Darren Clark. What might have been? Seventy-three. Sixteenth tee, Duval. Perfect. We've seen this hole driven several times this week. Hardwick observe it today and yesterday. Tiger also. Starting a long way right, Mayfair's second to the long par four, 17th. And comes drawing back. The only way you can tell how close the ball's gone to the hole is by the reception you get of the crowd. So good. Well, they've got a hard bounce. Still going. It's a long way, 20, 30 yards past Duval. One iron off the 17th tee for Ian Woosnam. safely on the short grass, that's the vital thing. Yes, he's quite a long way back, but at least he's on the fairway. Moments ago, this was him in his second. Here. Started right, I think it stayed there. little cuppy bunker that one very rarely get a flat line so just two and a half holes left in this championship or will there be more drama Duval with a three-stroke lead in the middle of the fair at the 16th You'd have to say in a very commanding position. Well, it's been a very good championship. We've had fine crowds. Perhaps the uh, we would have liked we hard men would like a bit more breeze, but it wasn't to be. We're playing out of a smart car. playing most of his golf this year on the US Tour. 132 left to the pin for Duval. He must not go left or long. 
Just find the middle of the green. Amazing how his head moves as the club comes to the ball. And he's played conservatively into the front middle of the green. Played a very cool round of golf today and yesterday. Played quite beautifully. It was round yesterday. Started. Here he goes. Wonder what would happen when he's almost got it finished, and then <laughs> oh, I can't bear thinking about that, Ken. <laughs> hey, had a look at the trophy this morning. That the very, very small letters he engraves on it—you can hardly see them. Beautifully done. Great skill. five left to the pin on 16 and of course he will feel he's got to attack this such a dangerous pin to attack there perfect sand wedge distance so perfect langer at five under though who can still win? Fast can still win. Woosnam can still win. Mayfair and Jimenez, they're both six under. I suppose they still could. Jimenez, though, has this putt for a par. to stay at six under. Well done. Oh Ryder Cup possibilities of him can too. No doubt about it. Played so well last time. Sixteenth green, the final pair. I wouldn't say this is the easiest two putt very fast the last eight feet down over the hill it's quite a big shoulder isn't there the caddy marching up is just coming over the top of it now between there coming off the back of that bunker <laughs> quickly back to Mayfair Ooh, it went Six under, he stays. To Val's third shot at the 16th over the ridge. Very good putt. Expression never changes. And he's decided to go to putt out. Major, he must be feeling a little nervous. Another hole safely negotiated, just two to go. And he'll have a three-stroke lead.
side and the right side. Yeah. Where do you see it? More oh, centre, the, centre or left the of that? The flag is on, on that crane on the right hand one. The flag. Yeah. I was going to stand over this bush together. That's the little bush. Yeah, this bush. The bush yeah. Yeah, okay. With the, with the working, wind. Yeah, well, the wind's right to left. Yeah. Yeah. Fairly strong. Yeah. Okay. Good swing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
very disappointing because he thought he played a, a really good second shot into this green. Just picked the wrong line. Billy Mayfair just hanging on to the right-hand edge of the 18th. 153 yards to the pin, just 129 to the front. Wind against and from the left. Probably a little eight iron. going to get absolutely adjacent to the flag you'd have to keep the ball between the bunkers and the, the flag there but that started right and stayed there it just seemed to hop in as well Pete you might have plugged yes um, 10 yards out losing them for a par at the 17th Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's had a, he and Darren Clark have had a few of those last two days. has found the 18th fairway. Very commercial. You know, that to tie Nicholas Fasten. Well, not Ian Woos them anymore because he's just dropped a shot. Shape at three over today, three under. His chances went on the front line. Did I ever tell you about the time he caddied for me when David Thomas and I opened the Hill Valley Golf Club in Shropshire? He was, I know he was about 15, he lives to tell the story that Dave and I played, and it was a lovely day, and had a huge bag, Albert Menshaw was the boss, and I rewarded him, I think, with two of the golf balls that I'd played with, so he <laughs> thought I was a mean monkey then, he probably still thinks I am, but uh, he was a tough little guy then, and he's showing his... The toughness is still there. I think he's played wonderfully well today. Check has the honour. with the driver would he well he's like he's enjoyed this one arm but i think he's really has got to try and force a birdie out of this hole if he can no he's got the iron out uh, let's hope he hits a good one oh, yeah. 
and he has threaded it between the bunkers and that's good position David Dixon, the only amateur, finished with a 74, very respectable total of 285. Langer, second to 17, wind off the right, 182 to the pin. Oh, what a shot. It's not going to hold, though, is it? Isn't that Dave Thomas territory? No, he was short. Dave was short. He hit the 7 iron a bit heavy. The front of the green and took a putter and three more to get down, and that was it, tied with Thompson. Bayfair now, little, little soft bunker shot coming down the hill, very awkward. Just about the left television mast if he wants to go straight for it. Three shot lead, finding the green. Um, really now, just the 18th to worry about. He's got a chance. Oh, beautiful putt from him in it. Round in 17th. And drop strokes at the 14th and 15th. Six under, a great championship. This is the... This is the final game. And it's traditional that once the players have hit their second shots to the final hole, the crowd come onto the fairway and the stewards do their very best just to hold them back. But up ahead at the Green Mayfair for a par four. This for 70. money here this week, £600,000 going to the winner. And there's how it looks. Duval leads by three. There's only one critical shot left, that's his tee shot off the 18th. Wisdom second to the last. three wood in that bag obviously went to the practice round thinking am I going to take the one iron or the three wood and unfortunately left them both in there check a second big drive he's a couple out oh that's handy and that was his third shot he drove into the bunker a little bit of good fortune a good well struck ball but to land where it did it, those are the sort of bits of good fortune you need to have big cheer just putting duval off at the 18th
Beautiful judgment. Got a few good breaks or bits of good fortune on the front nine holes, but uh, got it all under control now. Yes, Duval has played beautifully, and then we had that patch in the, in the last sort of, well, about an hour and a half, two hours ago now, where the main challenges all just creaked and groaned a bit. And of course, Ian here had the two-stroke penalty after one hole first. He's he's battled back from the, from that manfully. He's without that, he would have been eight under at this point, still two behind. But well, we never know what would have happened. It's just one of those things that shouldn't have happened, but did. I mean, a quick check on the scoreboard there. So he sees if he were to hole it. He'd tie with uh, Nicholas Fast for second place. If he were to three putt, on the other hand, well, Ranger's still coming up behind. He could still, uh, with him, I mean, he could still pip him if he hold. But it's uh, two putts at worst for Ian. that little shoulder for coming off the bunker affects this at all or do you think that's just up the right side a bit Ken what do you fancy this oh, I think it does affect it a little bit we've yeah. seen those ones are fast and Darren Clark's just one the left at the whole side with this with time for second position good pace oh, just even at that pace it just swung by of a langer. Just kissing David Duval's mark on the way by. Checker. That's a very fighting four. Drove in the bunker. 73 for Alex. Very shaky start, but from there on, it's played very well. Now, this could be very costly, Ken. And it's also a really horrible one. Shiny bit of green, hard baked. Fingers are crossed. Well done. Seventy one today, he was three over par after the opening four holes, which included a two-shot penalty for an extra club. Terrific performance. Three hundred played the holes from there on. Signing the ball to give to someone, probably not his caddy. Lang up. Four at the 17th. Stays at six under. So a birdie at the last for him to take him to a tie with Nicholas Fast for second. Oh my goodness gracious. That went right round the hole. That's how it stands with Duval, a three-stroke lead, one hole to play. Langer can still sneak ahead of that gang at six under, finish second with Nichols Fast. But David has a great luxury of having a three-stroke lead on this final hole. I 
Wales go back to Tony Jacklin. Remember when he won here? I do indeed, yes. He hit a beautiful drive down the final hole. The contrasting colour of the grass where the spectators have been and, and the teeing ground. Not take too long to recover. A little bit of rain and a bit of warm sunshine, it's amazing. Peter, I was just thinking, David Duval, about this time last year, was in the process of self-destructing in the road hole bunker when he had a chance of tying second, the Open at St Andrews, and took about 47 to get out and fell back to 11th place. So maybe he's obviously forgotten about that, and justice is being done this time. Put that camera away, I wonder what it'll please. take off the tee. You could hit a five iron, one iron, a three wood or a driver. I reckon he might give it a crack with a driver. Well, Lange can get to eight under if he holds his second shot. Yes, true. And if Duval lost his ball, he could be the winner. <laughs> he could suddenly win the championship. Like an old dog, found to find a place to settle. Not the driver, Ken. As Chingy used to say, the old harpoon. The old harpoon, the man in the moon. <laughs> Spoon. Perfect now, but it only just got past that bunker on the right. I don't know whether it would if it had been aimed at it. Now, what does Mr. Duval do? Give it the big driver. Smash it. Yeah. Aim it down those bunkers on the left. Slide it. Henry Longhurst said all those years ago, what a corker. <laughs> security, security. And as soon as the players get far enough down, the crowds will come onto the fairway and come down to the edge of the green. How many times have we seen players lost in the great melee as they got close to the 18th green game? Remember Arnold Palmer lost a shoe, Jacqueline, I think, lost a shoe. We've had all sorts of dramas. This always takes me back to 1980 when I was out the final pairing with Tom Watson. This is a real cavalry charge, it's a scramble for everyone to get through. Well, you can see that the ring of spectators already up 60 or 70 yards short of the green, and they'll part through the middle to let the players through. There's the umbrella going up to show the stewards at that end where the players are. And I think uh, Duval just beginning to relax a little bit and realise that he is going to be this year's champion. Greg Owen, who gave us so much pleasure, ended with a 73 today, 282 total. Very well played. Great week for him. This is where it gets a bit claustrophobic. Through without a mark. Thank 
Better than last year, yeah. so far. Terrific scenes, record crowds, well, big crowds all week. They must be up there around the 40,000 again today. 66 is today from Bob Estes and Mikko Illenden. 60 is uh, Davis Love, Kevin Sutherland, Fast, all 67, and Duval, a four for a 67 also. course this week has been beautifully set up weather's been kind uh, Bernard's got a long way to go you see the left-hand turret of the clubhouse and then the three sort of windows looking at us that turret's a good line for him Ken from here isn't it doesn't want to flirt down the right side no there's, there's no prizes for drifting down the right at all difficult to get down in two from there I think so. Wind slightly into off the left. Just between clubs and going for the shorter one. A bit easier to work the ball from right to left if you're hitting it hard. A little white circle on the fairway. Don't know it's a yardage from the. They take it from to the front of the green can, don't they? The, the white, blue, red, whatever they are. Yeah, Here's the dot is to the front. Then you add the pin on. Yep. Well, I don't think much can go wrong now. He's brilliant at these shots as well. Come on, guys. Low flight, drills them in with a little bit of cut spin. Knox is Kelly. No, it's not. Practically a riot down here. There's so much shouting going on. Poor guy hasn't got a chance of playing. I think they've settled now. champion the champion fighting to wake his way through the crowd Pushing and showing. Oh, he's under the rope now. And there he is.
it will be engraved with David Duval's name by the time the presentation ceremony happens in oh, five, ten minutes' time. Just getting David Duval to move his marker out of his line. Not quite sure exactly how the ball's going to break. So don't forget to put it back, David. Slanger has this putt to tie with uh, Nicholas Fuss for second place. Otherwise, there'll be six of them tied. And then, of course, David Duval will take the first prize, Fuss the second, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight prizes will all be added together. And each one of those players will have an equal share. Now this uh, this is worth a lot of a lot of money. This putt. <laughs> Forty-seven feet. Our magic machine tells us this putt. What's the betting can we uh, get in the hole? Or you're the man. Or you're the man, yes. Well, that's a nice variety. <laughs> right to left. Doesn't hit it. Yes, he had. No, he had it. Two putts to win. That was a beautiful putt. So he goes into tie for third place. You can do it. I think I could do it in there with three putts. <laughs> Julie is a special lady. Taking a long while, isn't he? Perhaps just waiting. Yes, for I think they go into automatic pilot, you know. <laughs> They're doing Ryder Cup matches. I've seen people have four for the hole from here, and everyone's busy lining up putts, and the other people don't concede. Most extraordinary. It's the because they play so much metal golf, I suppose. I... Just down the right. Just down the right. <laughs> Four putts for it. Finish with a three. This for a 66. <laughs> oh, it didn't come. It stayed there. A uh, very fine round, 67 and 65 yesterday. And the champion, David Duval. Quite some performance, Peter. Yes. And uh, he's done it. Not showing great emotion, but I fancy we might see the possibility of even a tear at the ceremony. You never know. He's been a good player for a long, long while, Duval. <laughs> Certainly deserves a major championship. This is a recorder's hut where the players go in and check the scorecards. Keep out. <laughs> well, this time yesterday evening, that leaderboard was so congested, but now there is one important piece of daylight, and it's a bit of daylight that gives David Duval his first major championship. He's the Open champion by three shots, 
from Nicholas Fast, who takes second place on his own, and then six players in a tie for third. Ernie Els, Ian Woosnam, who's emerged from this final round with a tale to tell. Miguel Jimenez, Bernard Langer, Darren Clark, and Billy Mayfair all share third spot on six under par. Jesper Parnovic on five under par. And the important mathematics being done in the recorder's hut. And the important engraving being done for the old cleric jug. We'll see that presented very shortly with the name of David Duval, Open Champion. Suitably engraved. Final round of 67 for 10 under par. Let's take you down other scores. Jesper Parnovic, as I say, on five under par. And other players on five under par. Sergio Garcia, Kevin Sutherland, the Californian, Mika Illinen. Des Smith, he had a splendid Open Championship in a final round of 71. And that 13th spot qualifies him for next year. Colin Montgomery, somewhat disappointing, really the last three days. And at four under par, Lauren Roberts, VJ Singh, who threatened for a while today. Davis Love had a splendid round of 67 much earlier. And there's Greg Owen, a round of 73, two under par, never able to get going after a double bogey at the second. But he's had an open championship to be proud of. Tiger Woods with, well, his worst major championship since he turned professional. And Barry Lane, level par round of 70. He continues his excellent recent form. Justin Rose, that round of 70, included a triple bogey seven. And Philip Price at one over par, and David Dixon, the proud amateur who long since claimed the amateur silver medal that was won here back in 1996 by a certain Tiger Woods. Other players on two over par include Portrick Harrington, Andrew Coltart, Mark O'Meara and Paul Laurie in that group at three over par. And Lee Westwood, a round of 74 today, he finishes at four over. Former champion Mark Kalkavecchia in the group at five over par. Paul McGinley and Jose Maria Olazabal had disappointing final days. Gordon Brown Jr., round of 74, he finishes at seven over par. And Sandy Lyle, well, disappointing final couple of days. But the champion is David Duval. Mark James, reaction to what you've seen? We've seen a good championship won by a good champion. Yeah, great championship, of course. It's absolutely A1, 100%. And um, the last two days, it was anybody's, and Duval was the one who came out of the pack played really strongly, 65, 67 finish, and uh, no faltering under the cosh on the back nine, and uh, he deserves it. We'll talk about David Duval more in a few minutes' time. What the newspapers are going to be writing about to a great deal tomorrow uh, is Ian Woosnam and that great swing of fortune and misfortune he had in the opening two holes. Let's remind everyone of the tee shot on the opening hole, first <coughs> of all, starting at 600 par. What a start this was. What a start this could have been. Fantastic shot, and just the sort of start you want. You know, surge of adrenaline after a shot like this to start with is incredible. Uh, and he makes his two, and he gets on to the next tee. And uh, I don't know who discovered that he had one club too many. As Ken Brown said on the commentary, um, he was probably trying to decide between a one iron and a three wood on the range. See the spring in his step as he left the first green and then, well, he gets the news that there's one club, too many in the bag and a two shot penalty and absolutely crushed, as you can imagine. And he dropped shots after that, dropped a couple of shots and then managed to rally, turn the round about and, and that is to his credit. He did well, I mean, he plugged away, um, he dropped shots on three and four. Uh, he just plugged away, he got an eagle on six, and I think that probably made a big difference. That got him right back up there, yeah. uh, somewhere near the lead at the time. And, um, you know, he kept going. I mean, he did brilliantly to uh, um, keep going and play the way he did. So he did. This was the eagle that was on the eagle. six that got him back to five under par. And then was a birdie on the 11th. And I this don't rather ignited the crowd again. Yeah, that was a, an incredible putt on. But, I mean, he'll look back on the championship, not so much maybe that uh, he didn't win it because Duval looked rock solid, but at the end of the day, if he misses the Ryder Cup by the odd spot, then, then this is what will have cost him. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Wisnam and uh, Langer will jump into round about 10th and 11th spots on the list. Yeah. Nicholas Fast will go straight into the team, so um, you know, that may be the one thing that will disappoint him. Yeah, that was the birdie at 13. Here's another birdie at 16. And the European Ryder Cup team can do with 
this kind of spirit, this kind of fighting quality, can't they? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And what's happened today is we've got Nicholas Fast, a good young player, in, and we've got Wisnam and Langer, two grizzled old veterans, um, now in around 10th and 11th on the list. So it, it's building up for a good mix in the team. OK, Ian Wisnam has been down alongside the clubhouse talking with Doogie Donnelly. Ian, it's a, a day I think that every golfer in the world will be feeling for you. Uh, <laughs> has that awful mistake cost you the Open? Uh, well, David does something stupid down the last I could have done, you know, never know, but uh, uh, did rattle me a little bit after starting with the two. Uh, very, very disappointed. Uh, you know, it took me about four or five hours to recover, really. I just really very disappointed. Yeah. During which time you obviously scored those two bogeys, which, well, we'll never know, but yeah. uh, you'd think that the way you'd started, that would never have happened, would it? Well, hopefully not, but uh, these things do happen, uh, mistakes do happen. Uh, but I just uh, had a good comeback in the end. Uh, give it a, give it my best anyway. Yeah, let me get the difficult question out of the way. I know it's your responsibility ultimately, but do you blame Miles the caddy? Ah, uh, one of these. I know it's my responsibility, but uh, I was messing around with a couple of drivers on the practice ground. Also, I thought it'd been taken out, but it. He thought someone else had taken it out, but it's, you know, it's, it's that's his job, his bag, you know. But uh, these things do happen, and. Uh, you know, it's just a bit of a shock, it's a, a nightmare. And as you say, afterwards you played wonderfully well. You must be very proud of the way you came back from that sickening disappointment. Yeah, I know, it, uh, it's a couple of bad shots on the Latin fuels after that, but I played pretty solid after that, had a couple of nice long putt on 11, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm happy with where I finished anyway. Mm. You've been making noises recently, Ian, about maybe winding things down a little bit, but uh, I would imagine that this has very much rekindled the old appetite. I think when you get something like this, uh, I know I can... I can compete now and go out and maybe next year I can maybe win it. Ryder Cup? Well, that's going to put me a lot closer. Uh, I only need, as I said, I keep saying, one good finish and I'm there. And uh, one more and that definitely will do it, I think. You figured in the Open's big story today. You didn't want to. Well played, Ian. Thanks very much. <laughs> well, let's hope he makes that European Ryder Cup team. Let's talk a, a little about David Duval, who's won for the USA once again in Ryder Cup year. Uh, a major championship title that's a little overdue, to say the least. Yeah, he's come close a number of times. Uh, and just been pipped at the post. He, he's rarely showed any sign of weakness uh, under pressure in a major, and this time it was the turn of the others to not quite get there, and his turn to just stay ahead. And he, he played beautifully the last few holes. He showed some very resolute form. Only dropped one shot all the way round. This was the birdie at the third that got him going, got him to seven under par. Putting form was always going to be a decisive element today, wasn't it? Yes, you've, you've got to have luck on your side, and, and that shot, we saw, we saw his second shot at the third earlier, and that got a kindly bounce. And whoever wins, you're going to have to have some luck. But he played great as well, and he certainly deserves it. That, that was, was the sixth, I think. Yeah, that was an eagle it. chance, and uh, he ended up with another birdie, which got him to eight under par. This was at the seventh. Another chance for Eagle, and he was giving himself these chances. He was, but he got away with the drive a little on six, but he'd hit two wonderful shots up here at seven and uh, a simple two-putt for birdie. And he was cruising now. He was just hitting fairways and greens. This was 11 after hitting his second shot right, and this was a wonderful bunker shot. thought at first he'd hit it heavy. He took quite a lot of sand, but uh, he, he must have known exactly what he was doing. And the birdie followed there, got him to 10 under par. And the birdie at 13 really put him completely in control. That was a good second shot to that hole. It's not easy to, when you're trying to make pars, to keep thumping it right at the pin. And in the end, he won at 10 under par. Three shot margin of victory that makes David Duval the Open champion. And he's getting ready to talk now with Doogie Donnelly. Duval, Open champion. How good does that feel? So good, I'm having a hard time getting comfortable. <laughs> you know, I, uh, it, 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 it's a, a great thing, especially after last year. Um, I worked my way in the final group last year, and uh, probably shouldn't have been playing Dougie. I was so injured, and, and, um, and I just couldn't do it. You know, I gave it a try, and I just I couldn't stay with it. And soon thereafter, I was actually out for about 10 or, 10 or 12 weeks. Um, so the memories I, of the road hole bunker are finally gone forever. You know what? It's it's funny. A lot of has been said of that, and and the golf term was over before I got in there and, and had all that happen. All, all that did was cost me some some money and, and and spots on the field. I mean, in essence, you know, I finished second. I, I was the only other player who had a chance to win the golf tournament. Um, you know, but it just, you know, I was at a point where I had to try to get it. You know, knock it in and, and pray for a miracle on the last. And 
you know, it's just uh, it's a tough place, and it's just not a spot, a spot to be. Yeah. Let's talk about this year yeah. and this weekend particularly. How pleased are you with the way you played under this kind of pressure? Um, I, I'm very, very pleased actually. I uh, I didn't quite. Um, I don't feel like I, I swung the golf club particularly well the first couple of days. Um, and as I said earlier in the week, my putting saved me. Um, and.